do you want to do it as part of the town manager yeah. town manager yeah. search yeah, stuff, just or do you want to do it later? Just a quick update. Yeah. No, no specifics, just some yep. round numbers. Okay. Yeah, I can't. I'll take that. Just explain her what the process is. Yeah. All right. We good? It was a approval. Second. Did someone in second? I don't know. Mo moved in. I don't know who second. Second it. Second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. And we have public comment or inquiry. If there's anything that's that's not on the agenda for this evening, and anyone has any comments, just make sure when we do it that um, state your name for the record so we have you in there. So. Okay. Uh, I want to say my name is Dan McCullough. Uh, I've been part of Bethel for 60 years. Um, I was part of hiring and the reconstruction after I read. I had a convenience store in town and uh, I've witnessed and been you know, active in this community as far as daily flow and I'm extremely concerned um, why we're at where we're at. I understand this board is not responsible for a lot of that but at the same time I'm here tonight to urge this board. I've managed 20 and 30 employees, $5 million plus companies since 1980. I've managed people. And I urge this board to acknowledge what they have in house right now for assets, namely Teresa, and go into an executive session, put a pilot in front of this plan, and uh, get control of this. Because we have, I, I, there's just so many things that I could, and I'm not here to, to, uh, you know, I, I witness this in my store every day with people. I hear it all. And I share with them and with Dave's sandwich shop. But my point to this board here is that I, we do have been elected to lead this town, and we have our faith in you as a board. And I don't believe we can go through three, four more months of interviews and processes and orientation and staff or whatever to bring somebody on board, bring them up to speed, and get the things that need to be gotten done, done. I mean, I'm talking about, we've had two repairs in front of Richardson's Country Store, we've had one repair on Christian Hill. These are little asphalt jobs. These are five hour projects, total. And if I were in construction, I couldn't know a customer for, you know, say I'm out of here and see you in six months. Those, you know, and this is right downtown. And I mean, I'm not, it's nothing personal here. I'm not here to, 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 but I want a town manager, and then I want a town manager who's accountable to her department heads to make them account. And, and that's all I want to say tonight. I mean, I, I'm, I've sat by and I've vented about it. I've shared it with a few of the board members before. But I would urge this board that. You know, this is a, is, this town has become extremely expensive to live in. We've had eight water bills in the last eight quarters, and they've changed six times in the eight quarters. And there's people here that are either they need to expire or they can't afford to live here anymore. So that's part of my urgency here. Is that you know, Vermont's in trouble. Vermont's in trouble, and Bethel's in trouble because we, we, you know, we we got to get a handle on things. We can't just keep throwing money. And I'm concerned about this little eight-week adventure here with. You know, just, you leave the town garage, there's three little areas I can throw a rock from that could be rectified before lunch. And they, we cone them, we drive around them. And I just, I, I'm, in, in private industry, I couldn't do that. You guys at Pike couldn't do that. So that's my thing. I, I mean, I don't want to take up your time tonight. I appreciate everything you guys do. But I, you know, I just feel like, I would again say, I would urge you to seriously go into a session, talk amongst yourselves, and try to recognize a true asset when you have one in-house that, you know, she shared with me, I went by a week ago Sunday morning, six o'clock, and this woman's car was parked in front of the town, and I'm like, I don't know, I don't talk to Teresa. And I'm like, I'm gonna go back and talk to her. So I go back top and the window come out, she's all casual, in sweatpants, in the year, trying to get stuff done, nose to the grindstone, tenacity, dedication, and cares. And I'm sitting there thinking to myself, you know, and I vented with her a little bit, but my point was is that here's somebody that truly is dedicated to the well-being of this town, and I think that if we interview a whole bunch, and she explained to me that she was interested in this job, and I'm sitting there thinking, 
if she weathered the home storm, if I had an employee like that, they'd come back, there might be a little bit disenfranchised to the point of saying, well, you know, I think I'm pretty good, but maybe I'm not, and maybe I'll go elsewhere. But anyway, that's all I want to say. I, I hope that you guys will, if you get a quiet moment, just the five of you, to, uh, to vent this and, and, and air it. And, and, because there are, there's a lot of people in this community, a lot of people, from Mount, from Olympus to the Dave Sandwich shop that I sit with on Tuesday mornings with coffee, that are, you know, they're frustrated. And now that things are starting to change, and this is the thing I shared with Teresa the other day, you have, you can't have a, um, lame duck manager for, for, four, for four months or whatever this hiring process is. I don't think you can. And continue to go into November. And because, uh, I mean, we have liabilities. Every road we drive on is, you know, to potentially leave a front end and stuff. So I just, I, you know, I know you guys are working on it. But anyway, thank you for that. And that's all I, and I, and I urge you to do that. Well, thank you for sharing, uh, um, Dan. As you know, um, the um, we'll update a little bit on the town manager kind of search um, progress. Um, I, I would say that right now we're not taking the longer approach like we did last time when we hired. Um, we, last time we kind of went nationwide. This time we're looking more regional, local. Um, but it, you know, it's still um, you know regardless of who's interest in the position on it you know it's a fair process to go through and open it up to the community well, as well as Chris if I was you yeah. if I was you I would ask myself I manage five ten fifteen million dollars I've had people said in front of me that are valued employees and I've lost a few because of that but I would urge you to say what are we looking for in a person management skills accuracy responsibility reporting to you guys these are all things. I mean, I had employees that would tell me what they wanted, that they knew I wanted to hear. But two weeks, three weeks, five weeks out, that wasn't the reality. And so that's why I'm saying is that you, as a board, what is this person, what do you mean? And I think you have it right now. And we may, you know, be right. Um, but we do feel comfortable, and I'm not going to speak for the whole board, but we, we do feel comfortable right now by appointing um, Teresa that we do have a very comfortable interim town manager that we don't feel that we're, you know, missing a beat on or we're having a lame duck session or any of those types. Um, I mean, we're being very responsive to what's out there now. We're starting the FEMA projects, which kicked off today. We're going through the bidding process of the remainder. You know, we'll be awarding two more tonight. Um, I would say we're on track on those. Nothing's fallen by the wayside. But is FEMA going to reimburse us if we can we meet that magic number? Yeah. We've already met it. Yeah, we've, okay. we're good. Um, and, and we just had our first contractor start working on Louisville today. So, um, and we got two more to award tonight. We've, um, we've either bid or have had the pre-meetings to bid on everything else. Right. Everything's out um, except for So in the next, like, I think two weeks, everything will be bid? Except right. for Peabody. Well, I'm not, I'm not necessarily, yeah. I mean, I, part of my concern, part of the reason I'm sitting in this chair tonight is that I don't want FEMA and the infrastructure and maintenance of Bethlehem Vermont's road system and water system. I don't think, if we're, if we're waiting for the federal government to rectify all of our issues, you know, I, I just think we're on we're on the wrong course, you know. And I understand we had this storm, we had these issues with it, but why did this community experience more damage than, say, Stockbridge, all these other communities? I know the reason why. I mean, things haven't been addressed, and that's why I'm saying is that accountability, 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 and it's, it has to be. I mean, I you have to be accountable. To, you guys have to be accountable to taxpayers. I can guarantee you, if this continues on till March of next year, it's, it's going to be, you, you're starting to feel well, it. I think, I think a lot of what the community has felt here in the last couple of years, as well as what we're continuing to feel, is past neglection on, on our administrations of past, and, right. and we're answering for that now. Right. And I will say that you know the board has, has been very forward-thinking on 
getting out ahead of things. I mean, we have the water master plan that had come back. We've already, um, we've already expedited that, so it's at the design phase right now, um, which we hope to have by November. I, I don't know. What's the well, we're hoping to go to bond. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to bond. Yeah. So we're hoping to go to bond, a bond vote in November so that we can start exactly addressing these. Because right now all we're doing is just fixing stuff. And we're trying to get an That's a, that's a $400 fix in front of Richardson's yeah. store. That's two ton of asphalt. Yes. That's two ton and and we'll, get it, we'll get it done. But we're working on, again, instead of running around putting out the fires, we're looking at trying to get the long-term picture. I mean, you're following up on, on the back row of the Royal thing. Dave Benson dug that across the road. I mean, I, can all, I don't want to get into the initial details. I mean, it is, I mean, why do we buy a $130,000 backhoe? Why do we have that? Dave Benson does all our digging. I mean, those are issues, I mean, as a taxpayer. I mean, I watched him fix this problem at the bottom of the bridge in February. It was horrendous conditions. And AJ, I think this, that's the guy's name, did a, you know, he's a, he's a good operator, evidently. Because between working where he worked and down in there by the sidewalk to repair that. But then that settled out of the way. Now you have a canyon on the sidewalk that's been there since February. Yeah. These are the kind of things that, you know, I, I, I'm not, it's not personal. I just want people to be accountable because we're paying, we're paying rates that this income to this town can't, can't sustain. My $216 a quarter for water. Okay. No, that's not fire insurance, that's nothing. I mean, I, I started when Teresa and I joked about it, when, I, when she first came to town, she made a real down effort of going around and meeting people. And she was in my store one morning, we had a coffee together, she's pretty close to the same age as I am, our kids are the same age, and I asked her a question two years ago that said, Teresa, if you were 22 years old, would you move to Bethel and start a family? Well, I think if, you know the answer to that is if you're 22 years old, would you move to Vermont? Exactly. Right, and it's not just well, Vermont's a Bethel. Vermont's a goddamn good state. Right. I mean, this is so, phenomenal. Yeah. But, but the thing that it's, it's going to take time to right the ship. It doesn't turn around. You have instantly. to get the rings. We're working on it. I you know, it takes it takes more than you know, two, three, four years in some cases. I mean, it, it takes time. I mean, we really had ourselves in a, a boat. Um, but, I appreciate your time. You know, I, I think, you know, we, we feel comfortable right now that we're not missing a beat with um, Therese right now. Um, we're going through the formal process. We're not lengthening that process, really. Um, well, I, I, if I was three, I mean, if I worked in a company, if you worked, and I'm just sitting in here, I'm, I'm, kind, of at, I'm kind of at the controls of the aircraft, but not really. There might, there's somebody might come tap me on the shoulder and say, who's side. So, I mean, there's a difference in being in control and, and in asking your department heads to be accountable. What did these guys do this week? I mean, I, 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 I'm, Chris, I want you to explain, I understand that. I live on North Main. I have a business on South Main. I'm doing two health sites in Christian Hill. I'm driving around town and going to Bethel Mills. I'm in and out of town all day long. And I see stuff as a taxpayer that concerns me. Accountability. If I had two employees working for me and they were hanging out with the ship for an hour and a half, and I came up to Chris and said, here, we work for your house seven hours today. 40 bucks an hour, you know, and you're like, well, yeah, what would you do? And that's my thing with accountability. And, and I don't think, as a Wayne, I hate to use that word, but an interim town manager, if you have um, true control of your departments, do you really? I don't know. I, I wouldn't think you would. But maybe you guys, maybe you think she does. But anyway, thank you for your time. Okay. Does anybody have anything else? Public comment? Inquiry. Okay, hearing none. We will move to our first appointment. Peter. Good evening. Um, my name is Peter Gregory. I'm a director of Two Rivers Equity Two Regional Commission, and I appreciate the time. I'll be brief, but I uh, just wanted to. Uh, introduce or reintroduce myself to all of you and um, talk a little bit about our commission and 
put a pitch in for a, uh, an appointment to my board from your town or two if we uh, are able to find that. But again, Two Rivers is one of 11 regional planning commissions in the state. We have 30 towns within our region. I've got 10 staff and a couple more that I hired in the summer to do culvert inventories and road erosion work. Um, we've been around since the 60s. I've been with the commission almost 30 years. Um, I've been director since 97, but I've got a staff that's uh, really well versed in GIS mapping and road work and um, housing, transportation, emergency management, uh, FEMA related work, all that kind of stuff. Um, got a board of about 60 people, but we have 30 towns, and each town can point up to two, a regular and an alternate. We meet about eight to ten times per year, depending on the number of nor'easters and, and things like that. Um, and we have responsibilities to uh, our communities in helping them in working with FEMA and grant writing. We do quite a bit of grant writing and grant administration. Uh, we also have uh, responsibilities in developing a regional plan. Uh, that regional plan is under uh, consideration right now. We're going through public hearings this week. Uh, but that, that plan is something we're required to do, and it helps guide municipalities in their planning. Uh, helps guide the state in how to invest its resources. So that's kind of a, a nutshell about Two Rivers. I can get into a lot more detail or answer any questions, but I don't want to take up too much of your time. But um, Carl Russell was the last uh, appointment from Bethel to my board, and I guess uh, in March when his term was up uh, on the select board. That's when he stopped being a commissioner. But uh, he, was, he was a good man, good smart guy, and, and really good <coughs> So I'm willing to answer any questions about, you know, time commitments or what else we do or complaints or mm -hmm. things happening in Washington or anywhere else. I'll answer anything. I, you know. So you said you meet eight to ten times a year. I know Carl did say you might be interested in staying as the alternate. You've just been so busy and been able to make some recent meetings. But how long do your meetings normally last? Uh, we keep them to no more than two hours. We strive for about an hour and a half because people have a long drive. Right. And they start... Six, uh, 6.30? Oh. Yep. Where are they usually held? Well, sometimes we try to rotate, but then we lose about the half the commissioners that don't want to go to that side of the region. Sure. So generally, we do meet at Woodstock, at the senior center. But yeah, if Carl wants to continue, that would be fantastic. I did not as the, yeah. Yeah, no, that's, that's <laughs> He was like, well, it's like, I really need you to find someone else. Yeah. Okay. But he did enjoy it, certainly, yeah. and, and just telling him this. Absolutely. Him and now, right at this point. And certainly I've met Rita, um, Alan and I did last week, and I um, was able to, um, she's worked with her in a grant, and also um, I kicked her the RFP for the engineer for Pinella Bridge, um, as well as uh, we have a project we're waiting for. We need to get some somebody from the state to perk up and answer us, and um, so which has been nice for me because I did the others, and it's just, I just don't have time to do Everything plus those, yeah. so she was great. Yeah. We really enjoyed meeting her. Yeah. Do we have anybody on the board that might be interested in that position? Or? Yeah, I was, I was thinking about it. I went to breakfast that they had there a few months ago, and very interesting stuff. So, I mean, I, it doesn't have to be a board member. No, but I think it'd be, you know. No, but it'd be nice if he's Paul's interested, because it is. Be nice to have that information that they talk about and being so able it's to have. It's a high-paying job, too. Yeah. <laughs> we usually have good pepperoni and some cheese. Higher right? comp time. There you go. You get more comp time. time. Right? That's right. Yeah. And they feed yeah. you better than we do here. But it seems like that's one of the one or two positions that you know probably ought to have a select board member yeah. be a part. Either that or someone in the town administration be a part of that. Um, so is that when is your next meeting? Next meeting is actually uh, August 21st, and then we go to the fourth Wednesday, September, October, and then we have a December meeting. You can go try it out, Paul. <laughs> no commitment necessary. No, that's why I'm sitting there. <laughs> no, I think I'd like now to you know. challenge you a little further about it. Sure, that would be fine to answer your questions about time and all that. But, no, I think the more towns in, in engage with us, the more they can value they see it and what we can offer. I do have a really good staff and a lot of managers. I know at the breakfast there, there were several folks that, from neighboring towns that were there that had no concept of what, you know, what the organization did. 
Well, that's one of the reasons we did that kind of outreach and stuff. And we always yeah. wish for more attendance. But I mean, you know, like I'm planning commission is always constantly so it's something we're constantly trying to do. So we appreciate your support, your payment of dues. Uh, we've enjoyed working with Therese so far, and, and uh, she's been doing a lot in a very uh, short amount of time. But uh, we want to be a resource uh, to you all uh, to Therese during this transition. There's just a ton of things going on, things to adopt, things to you know. Yeah, yeah. But no, no, but it was really helpful. It was helpful for Al. Uh, he was great. And uh, so she was super to deal with. It was just made our lives easy, so it was really good. Yeah. And we know the people that hope are not good. Exactly. That's sometimes the key, isn't it? Yeah. Well, thank you, Peter. Well, well thanks we'll, very much. I think what we'll do is we'll get back to you on uh, first, if, if Paul wanted to go through with it. If not, we If, if for some reason that's not something that you want to do, Paul, then maybe maybe we had to put it out on Facebook yeah, and advertise and see if anybody wants yeah. to sure. be part of that. So try to find somebody. Sounds really good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Right. Take care. Thanks, Thank you. Yeah. So, um, so Dylan was um, was here last time. Um, he had purchased the estate of uh, John Henry, um, and was looking to was looking to get. Um, it's not necessarily an abatement, but was looking to get his um, the water and sewer um, uh, bills taken care of during the renovation period, uh, similar to what you know was going on with this building here. So. Uh, but he made it in um, public comment period, so we asked him to get an official appointment to be recognized for that. So, uh, did everybody have a chance to get the write up? No, I didn't. And so I think his letter did request an abatement and. Right. Letter request an abatement, an abatement for the last quarter and moving forward, right? So we did the math because it's all. Because Dylan bought on June 10th, so the right. debate any of his last quarter would just be since he owned it moving forward would be an abatement of $44.20. If you were to debate last quarter, prior to that it was owned by someone else and part of the purchase deal. Mm -hmm. um, so, so currently just to, so everybody understands and correct us if we're wrong, but um, so what Dylan is looking for right now is, is to, um, is for no charge for the water or sewer during the uh, a one year period or until repairs are complete um, for that that building. Um, which you know right now like Therese said would be forty four twenty um, in some back pay for, for one month's worth. Um, and then for the next year that building we currently haven't been collecting any revenue on that until gotcha. Dylan bought it, but um, for some time. Well, it had been, yeah, I don't know, I can't remember how past due it was, but the water is off, right, Tim? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so the water is off to the building, and it's been off for? It's been off for 200. I think it was 3,000. In past water? Yeah. yeah. I think they maybe kept the taxes up and off. So the, the one year commitment though is about twelve hundred eleven hundred and seventy one dollars. Which would be the abatement, right? The one you use. Right. So it's like a eleven hundred and seventy dollars plus the forty forty four, whatever it is. Right. I, I don't know, I was a little leery about the twelve hundred dollar commitment. Because yeah. that money has to come from somewhere. Mm -hmm. Well, and I was kind of curious, especially because um, we have Tim here, if he can speak to, I know we've sort of, in the past, we've been really understanding, and you currently have one property under abatement, but you've chosen to invest in a second company, so you had enough money to invest in a property, but now you're asking us to abate a second one, and I know it, Tim has mentioned before, it, it really significantly impacts. Let's get it out of the way. It's not, it's a crack act. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm, I'm aware. They're, they're, I'm aware of it. And diabetics, because there's needles everywhere. I, and I'm not. I think you're doing the right thing. And this is not an argument about about whether you're doing the right thing or the wrong thing. We still have to make a decision as a board that's best for the whole town. 
And that takes into account that you're fixing up a property that in, in time will bring revenue back to us in a way that it wasn't. Right. And it got that's, I mean. Right, that's up, but that's one piece of it. And I'm, I'm curious to hear from our water manager what the other side is, um, because there is another side. There's always another side. And so it's not, to, it's not to say at all that what you're doing is wrong or even that you're asking for something that isn't reasonable. But, you know, I'm just I'm curious to hear the, the counterpoints, I guess. Well, Dylan and I actually talked about it shortly today, and, and I've, I struggle with it. It's a one-for-one one loss. You know, it's either, it's actually, it's a two-for-one loss. Because when we don't have that 1,200 coming in, we have to make up that 1,200 to have that initial 1,200. So it's really $2,400 at the end of the day because you have to make it back up to have it to spend. But the, the thing that I think Dylan brings to the table at the end of the day is he's fixing a property beyond what it would have been if it had maintained the situation it had. It would have just dilapidated into the ground. Um, we would have ended up with it one way or the other. It would have been a tax sale. Um, so I, I really struggle on, on what it costs the system, but I also understand the benefits of the town from the two properties that he's, that he's upgrading for us. And so I guess I kind of agree that he should have, I hate to say it, but I, he should have an abatement, but I would like it to be addressed. If you go for whatever term, address it at that term and get a status update and find out how much longer. That's my feeling. Well, I think currently your other building is. Yeah, we did, we did every, every double quarter. Right now, I think that's debated through. I think he's got another quarter. One, one more quarter. Right now. Then he's back. Yeah, until September, right? Yeah. So how many yeah. quarters all together was that? Two, was this one here? Two, three. Three, uh, three. three quarters. Four. Did it make four? I think it was four? a year. Yeah, I think it was a year. I think so. Okay. It was a year. Maybe <laughs> close. Three yeah. or four quarters. And that, was that two apartments before Dylan, or was it yeah, two? Yeah. So it was two before, now it's two again. Yeah, she would have downstairs, and then I think the other one was vacant for a while, but yeah, so it's two people. That'll take more than two of you. Right. Right. But it's, um, I don't know. It, I'm now, not sure how it was built, honestly. It might have been built. It, yeah. You're still looking at from September being operational yeah, no, on that yeah, building. That be at that point. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, I guess the way I look at it is, it's, you know, if we're going to do something with some of these buildings that are, you know, almost at the point of no repair, you know, that we have to be willing as a town to kind of put that down payment down, knowing that, you know, we're we might eat it for six months or a year, but in the long run, it's gonna be better off for our community. Um, you know, because if we don't have, hopefully we're at the point, some point here soon where we don't have those buildings, so we don't have to have this discussion, but until then, we, you know, there's, there's a few other buildings in the downtown area we can, you know, that are like that too. Um, but we didn't give the people on River Street a break. But were well, the buildings ever empty? I thought that they always had somebody in there in that commercial property. I thought that was the deal with them, Mo, was that they always had somebody, somebody in yeah. there, like in one, but maybe not the other. And so I think, you know, that was, but I think, so I think that was a, you know, when we, when we decided to go um, update our water policy, especially, you know, we took away the, we took away the option of being able to put those on vacancy right now. The commercial property. Commercial yeah. property. So what that the what that was supposed to do was to actually get the owners of the, those buildings to do something with them. Which which we made the comment at that time that you know we'd be willing to work with these owners to get those properties up to a speed where we can collect not just collect revenue but they could be full and you know um, serving a purpose for the town. Um, and when I mean, blisters get a hold of them, and he gets that. You know, it, it's a whole, you know, if, if we don't, you know, these buildings are going to continue to get devalued, which, you know, our grand list shrinks and, you know, it ends up being more tax money to everybody. Um, I think the only thing I was concerned on this one was just uh, the length of period with, without a check, check in, kind of Tim was saying. Um, the other one we kind of did like six. Yeah. We did like six months, and then you came, came, saw us, gave us an update of how things were going, and then, then you asked for you know another quarter to get it yeah. going. Um, I think I would be, you know, I would be more open to 
like um, to do six months and then have you come back to us um, at the end of the year and give us a status update of because by that time you know this property will be going you know give us an update I'm sure at that point you'll be switching your focus more to that place once this one's going right yeah um, and then you can kind of really give us a better timetable because um, it just concerns me to to give like a one year or until repairs are complete, which oh, yeah. I mean, you know I don't don't want to get into a building that takes five years or something. But. Yeah, I mean, well, I was kind of thinking that I'd be done before a year. That's why I said or until mm -hmm. you know if it was six months that I had done, then I would need a year. Um, that was that was what that was for until right. you know completed. I was thinking before a year, you know. I think by a year's time. More complicated. It said uh, no more than one, not four until. Um, so I, I guess you know I'm willing to do the six months and then and do the 44.20 on um, back based on that one month. And the only reason why I say that is because even though he formally didn't start the process, he started the process several weeks ago on this, you know, he came to the last meeting, you know, had he maybe been at the formal process out of the gate, he could have had that already taken care of, so um, we wouldn't have had to, because that's the only thing we're really abating is the 4420, the rest of it is not a technical abatement, but, um, so I, I think his proposal was kind of out there that would have covered that 4420, it just wasn't formally done in a setting that we could I think the six month time period is, is good. I like that. But I also at some point, you know, Dylan didn't buy the building just cuts. You know, you're hopeful that it's gonna turn around and show a profit and you know, get your return on your investment and make some money. He didn't buy it just because he had a bunch of pile of money hanging around. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there is some ownership on, on his part too, that he's you know expect he knew he knew the condition of the building and he knew what was going to take to get it back on the rolls again. Um, but so I mean, you know, so there's, by, huh? I mean, oh that. no, no, you yeah. did a great thing. Don't yeah, yeah. don't get me wrong. Paul was getting ready to buy it. I was this close. Oh, right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. he had the money in his hand. He was running down. I mean, you screwed. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just saying you. you you know, the, I, I don't like leaving just a, a like an open-ended kind of a thing with it, um, because that money has to come from somewhere. And it comes from, you know, for me, or Chris, or water users, all the water users on the system. I mean, that money's, unless we cut the water department's budget by 1,200 bucks or something, which, you know, is unreasonable. So I think the six month, you know, let's let's revisit it again in six months and see, see what happens. So it sounds like we got two on board for six months. Does anybody want to yeah. make a motion? Is that six months? So you you're talking about doing the abating the forty four yeah. twenty as well, or? I, mean, I mean, again, I, I you know I just see it as you know it's no different than what we've done to other building owners in town on either giving them short-term loans, we've done that in the past, um, you know, to get buildings going, just, you know, you know, and if you give money, then you can't collect <clears throat> money, interest on it, so you're in a way you're losing money, you know. Um, but, you know, these are the things that are forward thinking for our town as well. If we want to get out of the hole we're in and get the buildings where they need to be and have more owners, you know, like Lindley and everybody else that seem to be in the spirit of buying, then and we have an obligation to work with them. I think it's a good discussion to have because Lily's right. I mean, we've talked about it before and it's a slippery slope, and you know, we're always, you know, just you've said the same thing, Chris, when you guys have done tax abatements and then yeah. you see the budget status report, you're like, oh, oh yeah. yeah. So, absolutely. I think it's a good conversation to have. And, and Lindley's struggle is the same one we all struggle with. You're like, ah, you know, you see the good, mm -hmm. but, but it's a great, I'm glad that you had the conversation. I think mm -hmm. that was important. And, and I was glad that Tim was here on the late ass, and I'm glad he was here to win. And I would just say what would be important for me is, you know, when we have this discussion again in six months is, you know, hopefully, hopefully if this property is, you know, full, you're collecting in income on it, and we're collecting full water, sewer, taxes, yeah. 
you know, <laughs> but, but you know, the idea is yeah, that's the idea. The idea is that building's running. And yeah, that's, I mean, that's two water zones when it gets right. going. I mean, that's that's two waters, two sewers. Right. I mean, you know, and, and this one down here, that'll be you know another one. And I have pioneer monuments that you know I'm paying as of now. You know, and that's that's actually vacant. We have a kid that stays there once in a while, but I don't. I mean, I'm not trying to go for vacancy rate right? because you know it's not. It's, the difference between a vacancy rate right and that and these places are they're not vacant; they're shut off. You know, it's not like their water is available. Like Tim's got them shut right down. I mean, there's no definitely not using the system. You know. Well, and also if they if they turn into commercial. Accounts, then they won't be eligible for the vacancy rate. I mean, according to the new ordinance, or anything that is a commercial. <coughs> thing. It is commercial because it's going to run it out. So. Yeah, so that would turn into a commercial thing, so the vacancy rate yeah. wouldn't apply. Yeah. yeah, at that point, right? So I guess I just need a motion and a second. <coughs> so move. So the motion is for uh, uh, to give Dylan. Uh, six months um, with no charge of water or sewer for the the uh, the estate of John Henry and, and to abate 4420 um, which was this past month's um, water water and sewer usage we have a motion yeah. second okay second from Lindley all in favor uh, aye. Aye. thank you Dylan thank you We'll see you in. We'll uh, the fire and the leave. We put the period. We'll try. I'll try to. <laughs> we'll look forward to seeing you in December. Yes. Um, I think we just wanted to guarantee we'd keep seeing you. Yeah. That's really what it came down to. <laughs> At a certain point, you got to get your projects done. Oh, I wish that was a. I wish that was a factor. Don't worry. I'm almost in the same way. I wish they were done. Well, nice going. All right. Good luck. System I won't take up much of your time. I just, there was some scuttlebutt over the traffic fire the street here on North Main Street the other day. There was some questions and some concerns, and not everybody's in the loop. Well, there's a reason they're not in the loop. It's not what they do. Uh, there was some questions about why the fire didn't have water right out of the hydrant immediately when they got there. Well, it did. There was just some speculation. Some people wanted to know why the water wells weren't already ready, turned on. When there was a fire, well, it's because they run on timers. Um, but it is also part of the upgrade that we're working on. So that the minute there's a drop, then they will start filling back up. It will all be automatic. The other thing is, is we have a very good relationship. I didn't know Gary was going to be here. We have a really good relationship with the fire department. Uh, every time we have an issue with a hydrant, I do an updated sheet of all the hydrants again, and, and it's in red, the ones that have issues, and which way the handle turns, because everybody gets anxiety when you have these issues. Mm -hmm. And so it tells them exactly what's going on with what hydrants and where. And they know that internally, and then some people, I guess, heard when Morgan, is, and it's grateful, but Morgan is now on the fire department, and he also does water and has keys to stuff. So David knew the minute that we had a fire, turned the well on, so we got some water going up. So some people heard, overheard this conversation that were not part of the group, and then they were wondering why it wasn't turned on, and it's because of the automation. We just, we don't have it. I've already met with Green Mountain Power. I met with our surveyors, I met with the engineers, and I'm getting ready to work on the easement with the landowner so that we lay out where the potential power will go for the bond vote for that well. Um, Things are going the way they're supposed to. We just have some people that don't understand everything that's going on. Right. Um, I don't know what else to say about what they don't know or how to bring them up to speed, but really, I mean, if you brought them all up to speed, you wouldn't need me. That's great. Right. Well, the good thing is, too, it's one more reason that Tim and I were talking about this is that the, the bond book, there's something else that people, you know, aren't aware of is mm -hmm. updating the lines and all that. Is, yep. is the fact that, yeah, it's fire, it's protection so that, you know, if you have a leak or massive leak, or a main break, a fire, they're going to automatically pump. So 
will kick on because right now we can't let them run 24 7 so that was another great feature of what's going to come in the you know in the bond code so. and david and the whole fire department the, the hydrants because of the size of our reservoirs they're not designed to fight a complete fire what that does is it lets them get on scene they start suppressing the fire while they set up their equipment to start drop out of the river, which is an endless supply of right. water. The, they practice this all the time. It's, it's their plan. It's, it's what they do. And, and so it's pretty much status quo. So I just kind of want to put you guys to ease. It's really, it's not, it's controlled mayhem is what it is, <laughs> pretty much. So the hydrant that's out here is that's yep. Bad. When that blew off, uh, Danny mentioned it. When it blew off in uh, the end of February, uh, within a week they had an, envelope, uh, an email that said that that one was out of service. The problem was it damaged the pipe. Right. I so know. we were then faced with the choice of do we spend five grand, fix that hydrant, and then pass a bond vote, and then put a new system in in a year. So then I threw that $5,000 down the drain. The way the system works now, where they draw from whatever hydrant is closest to them, they, they pony the water to where they are, and then they draw out of the river. It really didn't change the firefighting effect, and thankfully, that fire, that house had a hydrant right in front of it. Um, so this one, I, out of, it's out of service is what it is. It's, oh, yeah, no, it's, and it's fine, the drinking water division is fine with it. They understand that we have these issues, and. They also, they, they know where we're going, they know what we're trying to do in this support. It's, it's pretty much a new point. The next side we're down, they're working on the stairs, they're excavating around it, and they actually, EF Wall asked us to shut it off so that nothing happened. Uh, these are all AC pipe, they're slip joint. Uh, they have a really insufficient thrust plot, uh, which is what happened to this one. This one literally wiggled its way off the pipe and then blew off is what it did. Yeah, so try not to throw good money after bad. But the fire department knows, everybody that needs to know is in the loop and the communication is awesome. And I'm grateful for how they react to it. Yeah, we, there's, there's no way we would have used two hydrants on the line anyway. No, because one takes away from one the other. One takes away all the other. So right. The only one we would ever open is one. And then as the fire began to develop, we realized that we had no access to it. So we had a Methodist church parked right next door to it. So then it becomes a question, our fallback position is defensive, but we keep anything else from happening. That's our real purpose. So at that point, we knew we were going to have to flow close to 1,000 gallons a minute, which wasn't going to come out of the hydrant system. As it was, we flew 130,000 gallons, 130, gallons yeah, out of the city system, and about another 60 to 80,000 out of the river. Um, we never had to go with the water curtain for the Methodist Church, thank goodness, but we still did a lot of uh, large diameter uh, work on, on the roof, just keep it cool enough that we could allow it to break through and show us where it was at. And, that, and just after that, it was done. And that's the other thing, too. The fire suppression actually was on the ceiling in the second floor. Well, the fire was first, and the fire was in the attic. So even though the fire suppression was running, it wasn't getting the fire. Um, yeah, it was, the fire was above the sprinkler system. So it was never going to trigger until the room became hot enough to trigger. And at that point, we were actually pulling our people out because we didn't have access, temperature loads going up, and then it became a dangerous. Attic fires are always very dangerous, um, almost as bad as cell. So it's, it's just a precautionary note. And then when you fall back, you take option B or option C, and you start planning this out well. So anyway, if you guys ever have any questions, just send me an email. I'll uh, get back to you as quick as I can, and we can hopefully keep moving forward with this program. You guys have any questions? No. No? Oh, all right. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Nice. Bye. <laughs> Next, we, uh, we actually get the town manager search committee piece. Um, and then after, uh, Paul will kind of update us on um, what we've had for responses to date. Um, so the, there's been, been a little, um, well, there's been a few questions that have been addressed to either myself or you know, the board or the town here, um, administration over the last week or so is, um, 
you know, that people that have uh, expressed interest in the position of what is it actually that you do or, you know. Um, so what we did, the last time we did the town manager search, uh, when we hired Greg, what we decided to do was, because uh, the select board has all the power to interview ourselves and appoint a new town manager, uh, we felt at that time that it was best to get the community involved as well. Um, so we um, established a, a temporary committee which was made up of the select board members and then we had opened it up to the public. And um, last time we were gonna make it as a 10 total committee, so there'd be five board and five community. Um, it just so happened to be that five, exactly five people wanted to do it, so we had a total of 10. Um, so what the committee does is um, once we collect the applications, we get together as a committee, um, every committee person gets a copy of, of, all, of all the applicants once in a while. Um, so right now, Paul's kind of heading up collecting of the applications. He'll weed out some of the oddballs because sometimes it's clearly somebody just put their name in for unemployment or, or they hit the reply all to 10,000 of them out on some website. Um, so he'll weed through the, <laughs> the odd, you know, irregular ones, and then he'll collect what we would assume would be the ones that are worth the committee to start looking at to, um, and last time we, um, so we'll meet at some point here in the next week or two as a committee. Um, we'll start looking at the applications and we'll start talking about the interview process of, you know, last time we had 34 people that applied. Uh, we went nationwide. This time we're doing it more regionally, so we would expect that we would have, you know, a lesser draw, um, and then figure out how many people do we want to interview. Um, last time, out of 34, we decided to interview 10, and we started the interview process at 10, and then worked our way into like one or two rounds of interviews because it was so large. Um, you know, where this time, depending on what our response is, you know, maybe it's starting at I don't know six or something. You know. Um, so last time we started with 10 interviews, um, and the first interviews were done by phone. Um, I think there were a few Skype interviews. Um, so they were all done, um, and then after the first round, the committee would get together and talk about you know, how each one thought about everyone's um, uh, interview, and then we would assess you know, a magic number of, okay, let's go from 10 down to five or six or whatever we went, and then we did a, a final round of interview. Um, so so the, um, the responsibility is really just be a part of the committee um, and go through the process of um, seeking out the applicants that we have, interview them. Um, it does not mean that all 10 committee members have to be at the interviews. That was one of the nice things about last time is, you know, because we all have our normal lives that, um, you know, some people couldn't be there on a Wednesday to interview, so you know there'd be other people that would be there, and then we'd just compare notes with everybody how the interviews went. Wouldn't it be smarter to have them in the evening? I don't know, evening. Yeah, I mean, last time I think we tried to do like we had some like morning ones and some like late afternoon ones right. or early evening. Well, it depends well, on the number of people we got. Yeah. So like, you know, Greg, for example, on the other side of the country, it was a time difference there. Yeah, that's right. Some of them were Skype. Yeah phone interviews and personal. We would assume that the interview process will probably be a little different this time because it is more of a regional focus. So um, uh, last time, maybe only three or four of the total amount were actually done in person. They were done, you know, either through telecommunications of some sort, uh, where I would expect this time that a majority of them will probably be done in person. Um, so that would change a little bit. Basically, we've only got four people from the community at large that have applied for this, right? Yeah, um, currently, find my list. Unless anybody's here, because the ad said they could either put in um, interest to Kelly or they could come here tonight. Right. So, um, <laughs> so I don't know, maybe Brian and Gary are here for the committee members. I don't know. Yeah, that's a yes? Okay. <laughs> 
Um, so currently, well, unless I have any different individuals, I, I had received three names. Um, I don't know if there's some yeah, element the, the, four. The fourth, I think, was he was more interested in the interim. Interim town manager. Yeah, I just said that yeah. because I assumed yeah. Paul or someone should respond. Yeah. Kelly okay. gave it to me and I said, uh, put it in the pack. Yeah. The Paul or whatever, the or move something with it. And he's so, not actually even a community member, so right. he wouldn't be. Yeah. So I just have, yeah. uh, I think there were two in your packets, and then you received one via email, right, right. Chris and Dave Eddie? Yep. So, that, so that's everybody's three. got three. Mm -hmm. okay, you know, Kelly posted it you know, later, so maybe you'll get more. I don't know. Didn't we say it had to be in by this, this yeah. board meeting? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I guess we ought to follow through with what was said. Yeah. I agree. Well, the ad, though, says that we've got till the end of the month to submit resumes. No, no, he's saying that committee. The committee is saying people we, was for tonight. I'm thinking as though we might not get really get going until we know that we yeah. have all the resumes. Well, we, at our last meeting, we said people should apply by this meeting. Yeah. For the committee. For the yes. committee. Yeah. Yes. I mean, even though the applications will be coming in through the end of the month, we're going to want to have a committee meeting probably by the third week of the month so that we can establish, you know, uh, exactly what, what our, um, how the structure is going to look this time. Um, so, so right now, I mean, that leads, you know, eight people. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's, it's always good when anybody wants to volunteer to be on, be on the board. Yeah. I will tell you, it was from being on it last time. It, it was really unique. Like it was, um, you know, I've interviewed a lot of people before, and, and, um, but the town manager search was this really kind of a, you know, the first day you get, you know, 34 of these applications, and you're going through them at home, and you know, you're looking for, you know, okay, this one's most qualified. Put them in that pile, and this one, eh, I don't know. I'll put them over here for a little bit, you know, and. When you got done, you had to, we had a homework assignment that we had to come up with 10 and two alternates, you know. And then you sit in, you know, then the committee sat together and we we're all kind of like, okay, I like this person and I like this one. And, and you would thought, you would have thought that there would be like, you know, 10 people with everybody having different people. But at the end of the day, it, it was really neat because, you know, when we narrowed it to 10, I bet you everybody agreed exactly on eight or nine of them. And maybe there was like one person at the end were like, oh, how about this one? Or maybe we'll do this one, you know? Um, and the, I will tell you that it was interesting. The ones that were the most local, you know, at first we were getting like old town managers from different towns, you know, around Vermont. And everybody had them as like one, two, three, you know, they were like the top ones. And then as we started to interview, you know, they kind of fell out of the system, you know. <laughs> and it was just kind of a neat process because you, you, know, you almost thought like on day one that, oh, this one's right here, you know. Um, and, uh, but um, it was a neat process to go through and it, surprisingly everybody that was there at the end pretty much agreed on, you know, everybody down through. So um, I do appreciate everybody that put their name in to do it. Joanne. Joanne, and we had Penny Griffith, it's not here tonight, and Jane. So, so everybody that had put their name in, I'm sure, is chomping at the bit to get started. And then. I'm sure. The question that we've received is um, <coughs> in the end, who will make the final decision? The select, select board select, yeah. or the entire committee? Yeah. No. So, that so I left that out. So, I said, I don't know. so what the committee did last time is um, the committee narrowed it down to two, uh, two individuals uh, that we then brought to the select board, and the select board then talked about the two individuals and, and recommended one. And it so happened to be that the one that we recommended was the same one that the committee had recommended. Now that could be different. I don't know, but that's the yeah. way it kind of went. You know, just some people had asked. I told them Paul's like because I think the last, <laughs> excuse me, the last two uh, actually came to town. Yep. You know, for a personal tour. Yep. You know, oh, around nice. and all that kind of stuff. And, and just, but in the end, it's what makes the decision. 
So one of the questions was, obviously, the employees were curious about putting someone on the committee, but they kind of got the no, so not an employee on the committee. Yeah. Um, but an employee spouse is okay, and I guess. And then the other question is um, about that was, if an employee can't be on the committee, um, I think that the employee, whether it's you know, all the departments or however you want to do it, some of them were at least hoping that if they can have a representative that they could maybe um, give you some questions. You know, you could ask each department maybe for a question that they, maybe the road department, uh, water department, the office, you know, you could ask them and don't no, use it, but at least, you know, right. I think they at least want to feel part of the process and maybe by the, there's a question that you know, the road department has that uh, Pam and Kelly or uh, Tim might not think of. So I think there might be well, I know last you know, time like, like that. Like what Paul was saying is when when we narrowed well at least last time when we narrowed it down to the two individuals that came to the town to visit for the day they went to you know they went to see the public works department they went to see um, water they went to the uh, town office so they got to visit with those employees and talk and we did get feedback from everybody on okay. the discussions they had and and they had ample time you know I think they went and visited each spot for about an hour. Yep. Um, and then we had then we had lunch down at Coffee Girls. So that was kind of how we got the okay. employees well, involved good. last time. Employees but it doesn't, you know, one thing we will have to do is go through the questions from last time and there can be always revisions to those questions because they're kind of basic questions. But yeah. Um, so we, yeah, we're more than happy, I would say, to welcome any, uh, any type of I think certainly if you're going to do that, then I, I think that you know, the fire department is just a big department as a town as any other department. So I do think that if you're taking someone on tour, um, I think we, if you're going to do that, they should be in. I can't remember if we did the, I don't think we did the fire department last time. I don't know why, if it was the did time solid waste. Thing. What was that? We went down to solid waste. Oh, sure. Don't yeah. feel slighted, Gary. They went to the dump, but they didn't come see you. <laughs> yeah. <It's a> transfer, <laughs> stage. transfer stage. Well, well, I'm sure that can be something that the committee can look into. and. Um, so. so what's the thought on having evening meetings instead of a daytime? I don't know. I mean, I... Our structural, we probably could have in, in the, you know, getting everybody together to see what we wanted to ask for questions and whatnot, have that in the evening. I mean, these people all work oh, during right. the day. Right. They're on your committee all, right. all work right. during the day anyway, so... I think right now be, the important thing is to uh, well, acknowledge, the, acknowledge the individuals <laughs> that will be part of the committee um, and then... Paul will work on putting together a, a time uh, for the committee to kick off and have the first meeting and, um, yeah, and get, meeting get everything. That's a good, good point. So you'll contact these people, Paul. Awesome, thank you. So what, what are you thinking, Paul, for... Uh, uh, well, I think you we're... Can do it before your next select board meeting if you want to do it earlier in the day. So the next meeting is the 22nd. Because wherever we're going to be, we're going to have to warn it. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, last time we did it, we did it in the back room, town office. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where it's usually uh, yeah, but it's an open meeting. Right. Which is fine. So, yeah, yeah. I'm happy. We just have to warn it. Yeah. So. Let me let me chat with these folks and see what their availability is. I don't know what we have to dodge next week for the week of the fifteenth. I don't know what's going on for either committees or any. If you call, we write it, um, or if you stop by, Paul, because I just finished mm -hmm. payroll, so you can stop by any time. Um, there is on that counter next to the coffee yeah, or near my yeah, office. Yeah, uh, yeah, Pam is yeah. really good about writing. I know yeah. one day this week there is some things going on, but you can well, check. We've for got next a week. BCA meeting this week. Right, okay. so you can check for next week. I will. I will pre-warn it. August nine through seventeen. I will not be in the state. Skype in with Dave. Okay. <laughs> FaceTime. FaceTime. There you go. Okay. Sounds good. All right. So, as, as of right now, um, we've had 30 responses to the ad. Without getting into any real details, I just assign a number to each one of the folks that have 
that have applied, so we can deal with numbers as opposed to dealing with names. But uh, there's, there's a range. I mean, they're from all different parts of the country, even though it's a regional ad. It's with Indeed has, has put in 24 out of the 30 applicants have come in through Indeed. Um, out of all those, there's probably five that had a cover letter. Uh, and they range in, in experience from tire changers to CEOs, so. If there's no cover letter, I'd reject them because I, well, I'm big on cover letters. That's how we jumped them last time. Yeah. This is how we, some of the things we have to talk about, how we're going to do this. We're going to just, you know, outright not. Well, I know in the ad them. we asked that, oh, yeah. that all responsible to have a cover letter. Yeah. And I went on the Indeed site that does say right there. Yeah. And there is an opportunity for them to put a cover letter in their response oh, yeah, to the ad. Yep. So, because some of them obviously did. So, if, if, so that's about where we're at. It seems like it's died down. We've only had a couple in the past, you know, in the past few days. I don't know how many um, in the office. And that envelope. It's just two in the office. Okay. And, uh, I see you only got to apply for unemployment every so many weeks. So. <laughs> <laughs> So there is one lady who, who applied on Saturday, and then she sent an email to Therese yeah. today, yeah. Um, wanting to come down for an interview like today, tomorrow, whatnot. So and I'm going to deliver her. I'm going to hand deliver her cover letter and her um, references. So I'm going to contact her and explain the process to her. So we'll, we'll be in touch with her when we, if and when we want to set up. Evidently, she didn't read very good, did she? No. And I think the other one that had gotten it, Kelly Ford to Chris, I think she ended up telling that person an email, Greg's email, and so she forwarded it. I mean, I said, and it's Chris. Oh, yeah. So, um, and I think Chris had told her to tell the person, uh, look at the website, basically. Right. I think that's yeah. what she said yeah. on that on. So, I don't know yeah. what was the name of that, but um, that was the only and I know last time we talked about that the process took us seven months last time um, but we also went through the league last time which there was you know there was a, well, a month or two of going back and forth with the league on preparing questions you know just things that this time we already have um, that should cut the search down as well as I think last time we left it open for it was well over a month before we started the process, so <clears throat> I think the, the likelihood is that we'll probably end up finding a candidate by the end of September, I would think. Um, so I don't think it'll go as long as we intended, so. Do we have anything else with the town manager search <coughs> that we didn't cover? So we'll be looking, um, so anybody that um, wanted to be on the committee, it looks like you will be, and Paul will reach out to three individuals, um, and then we'll probably probably to expect at some point next week to have a, a meeting um, to start the process of you know forming the committee. So Paul will get back to us. Mm -hmm. yep. All right. All right, Alan's up. We're within four minutes right now. Now we did it within four minutes so so Alan tonight we were looking at so last time um, well last time we were we started the discussion of of the winter you know of a winter maintenance schedule with the public works um, so uh, you know public works had presented us with um, kind of a draft um, overview of uh, doing winter maintenance activities um, and um, it was also at that time that um, was brought to our attention formally that we have the issue with the one ton that has the cracked frame um, so we're down a truck and um, you know there was some initial um, um, interest in you know the possibility of purchasing a new vehicle and the board had Suggested at this time, you know, a couple of options for um, for Alan 
and the Public Works employees to go back and, and look through, which we um, we had talked about, you know, what what is the one ton worth um, on a trade value? Um, uh, what type of vehicle, you know, could we get by with? Um, you know, would we have to make the the big purchase now, or can we get away with something smaller while we identify what we exactly need for the winter time? Um, it was brought to our attention that if we do want to buy something for the winter time, that you know we do need to do that very soon um, to have any chance of that. So, uh, so in our packets there was. Some information here. Um, what is the estimate from the chief? Yeah. The tree the so one one option currently is um, a trade-in towards a, a new model or an upsize model. So we'll be trading in our 550 towards a 750 um, with a with trade-in value of approximately fifteen thousand dollars towards the new truck. Um, the only thing it didn't have is, do, do we have an estimate value of what that truck would be? 15,000. No, the, the new truck. New truck. All the research on the 750 to uh, the international low profile, which are the two that uh, seem to be the only two available that are already built or marketized. Last time we were kind of faced with what can we use to get around with, which you know we were talking about. I think at that time, you know, there was obviously there was the option of buying something new, right. which we were a little hesitant, not knowing exactly what we were going to use or need it for, above and beyond traveling. Um, and then you know the other option that we had tasked them with is maybe looking at for a, a used truck with a trade-in or, you know, that type of thing, which obviously would be a lot more than $1,000. Um, Back to the uh, 750 uh, Ford, they would give me a uh, 15000 trade-in value toward the uh, F750, which is, uh, um, in the end, is $96,275. That's for the trade-in? After the trade-in. That's with the plow? That's with bodily police. The low profile international was 110, 650, no trade. Fully equipped. Fully equipped. This is what you see in a certain mm -hmm. bridge. You said that was plow and wing. Plow and wing. 
So I think there's a you know interesting thing here. The other part of this is whether it's the 750 or the international the low profile, or the other thing that came out today, you know, from Alan saying was <coughs> what about the possibility of a ten wheeler? Shuffling basically Doug's truck a six wheeler, giving me that for my route, camp road and whatnot, and uh, purchasing a ten wheeler, and just keep running the one ton if it is inspectable. As a runner, uh, you know, I'm allowed to wait until we start the fuel rail issue. It could go two months, it could go, like the dealership said, it could go two years. Just and if the fuel rail goes, that's a $15,000 fix. Which truck is that on? The, the one ton. The one ton. The one ton that we're fixing? Or? Yes. Yeah, we just fix the frame. Yeah. Right. So we fix the frame so that they can actually use it for now. Right. Alan, what's so, the difference between the 750 and the 10 wheeler? Like, what what difference does that? The difference that would make is, um, say, for Doug's route, um, that truck is totally capable of doing. It's not four wheel drive, but with Jans, it's I've used it. The guys have used it to do my route. It's totally capable of going up camp road. Um, the benefit would be we take on another big dump truck and go for hauling material, stuff in the winter season or whatever. And when Doug goes to do, say, East Bethel, he's not going over there in a six wheeler with a small seven yard uh, truck. He's actually going over 14 yards, and he's not having to come back as much and all that travel time. So that's more efficient. To do his big more efficient. And price wise, what what's the. The 50 grand more for the right. 10 wheeler? Right. She's asking. Yeah, just the difference in price. I, I just brought that up today. I don't know okay. if I have to get some rules. And I know we're just talking about a, you know, you know, a vehicle trade option, but um, I mean, wasn't one of the uh, well, I think one of the concerns with the plowing routes was the size of the equipment that we were, have been using to plow one of the most aggressive roads that we have in the town. And well, I learned a little bit uh, just picking Morgan's brain. I guess the reason the one time was purchased originally was because it was doing all these side streets and it had to be able to maneuver very tight, like a fiber stable, high oil gap, you know, and one of the big trucks didn't do that. Now we have more than doing those. Um, and the one time was kind of in between, they thought it was capable to do the intro and all these side streets. So. But we're looking at, uh, maybe I missed it, but. When you were talking about moving trucks around, you know, Doug's truck to, or yeah, Doug's when we were talking about moving that around, I thought you said something about having a six-wheeler plow the mountain road. Is that what you yes. said? Yeah. Is that instead of the one? Yeah, because I'm not on these types of small streets. But is the six-wheeler enough to plow the plow the the mountain road, Doug? I used it. Is the is is the six-wheeler got enough power and rough enough to plow the mountain road? Oh, oh yeah. They used to do it. Yeah. I've used it most of the whole time. This one time has been broke down. I was using that truck. They will share your gas. No, I think, I think just, you know, kind of with the... Now it's not full of drive. Right. We don't need full of drive. Yeah. Now, the other question is, what equipment are we pushing back so we can purchase this new vehicle? We don't know yet. We were kind of the chance to look at the We've already pushed them back once. The grave has been pushed back. Right. So yeah. Correct. Yeah, so we, I need to look at the equipment schedule, and I have not had a chance to do that. Um, Alan, uh, the road crew, and I are going to meet this Thursday, Thursday at 3.30 um, to see if there's any changes to winter guidelines and to kind of, I, the impression that I had was that the board was looking for the road department to have a unified kind of what do we want for a piece of equipment. And um, so we're going to talk about that on Thursday. So between tomorrow and Thursday, I need to look at the equipment schedule and um, talk to them about what's, because we did push the grader. Um, the two trucks, one of which was Doug, was purchased at the same time. I know Greg had given one of them an eight-year lifespan, one of them a nine-year, so you, you know, to rotate them. So, but with everybody there, we can take a hard look at everything that they have and see if together we can't. You know, they work on the equipment. They can say, actually, trees, this can go sooner, this won't, you know, and kind of look at it that way. But the other issue, too, has been <clears throat> the one ton is 
you know, since there's not another vehicle um, available for people to use for whatever training or going to trim a tree in the night or this or that is, you know, the select board is going to need to consider whether or not you want to hang on to that one ton or do you want to trade the one ton either towards a new vehicle or something smaller because really people don't want to continue to use their personal vehicles. I mean, I think, you know, from what I see anyway, the idea would be, you know, we did a simple, well, I'm going to call it a simple fix you know, cost worthy fix on the one ton so that we have something that's travelable mm -hmm. at this point. That we, I think we pretty much intend to trade it for something, right? Uh, we just don't know exactly what that something is at this point. Um, I mean, are, are we, so if we had the one ton, if you get the one ton back with the frame, that'll be a travelable vehicle that you can do Pretty much anything except for plow with it. That's right. Uh, if it'll pass inspection. Yeah, that's a question. We should ask. We need to do another inspection when I get it back. Okay. Well, we'll have more information at that point. But uh, but at the 22nd meeting that we have, mm -hmm. the Public Works Department is prepared to talk about the complete winter maintenance schedule. Yep. Got with this. suggestions on. This is based upon our current fleet. This is where our best usage for our equipment is so that we can minimize the least amount of maintenance costs. And then, you know, this is our suggestion is to whatever, buy a 750 or buy something smaller and trade the one time. Is that? Yes. That sounds to be I was going to ask uh, Ryan. Do you, does the state ever, this has come up as a question, I don't know the answer. Does the state ever lease a vehicle like a truck or anything on the equipment? I know pipes at least equipment, but trucks, I mean, there was a comment about it. In the winter, the cow has issues, they left something upstairs. Yeah. So, but do you, does the state just purchase their trucks outright, or do you guys really ever no, lease? No, we run the stuff for our, just two different pockets. It's all state. Oh, it's all state. So the state buys. Basically. They buy it. Oh, right. For a little bit, we pay for it. But one of the options that we had was to lease, you know, lease the vehicle for whatever, three, four years or something. Yeah, lease to own, I think they call it. Of course, you never want to really own them after you lease them, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, know I have no experience with that, where I, we've always purchased them. So I guess it's a, it's a phone call to find out how that sort of works. Because you're right. I mean, if you're leasing it, you're... A lease to own is different, you know, whether you're leasing and you're just paying for a portion and then the buyout is horrendous. So yeah. oh. um, I was just curious. Uh, if, if anything, My big worry is if we keep pushing equipment back, they're going to be worth less and less by the time we get around to trade them in. Absolutely. Right. It's going to buy us. You're right. Because the more, you know, they don't look at the truck, they look at the hours. We've thrown a whole ton of money at that truck. Another uh, 750 and we keep the one time, now we have a vehicle outside. Sorry, I can't. He's asking if you have a vehicle outside. You keep the one time and buy something else. This vehicle outdoors. Yeah. I don't think we're going to be able to keep the one time and buy a new truck. I've just know. asked him a question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just don't want to see the greatest sitting down all winter again. So, yeah. I would, I would say we're probably going to be trading one for another, you know. So that's the plan for Thursday is to look at the maintenance schedule or the winter maintenance guidelines, excuse me, um, which you've all seen. And um, so if you have any comments, feel free to 
share, and then we're going to talk about this. We'll bring the equipment schedule and be able to talk to, you know, these guys maintain it and see it. It'll be what do they think is re realistic. And, um, and Alan will have prices, and they'll make a well, the other thing we've got is that whole list of laundry list of items that need to be updated on the, on the existing trucks. Windshields, the mirror, the right, and, um, the cloud lines, you know, plows. Yeah. That's, that's good. Well, we're on next year's budget. But that's budget. all facts, what we started the budget. And that's all into, you know, this year's Can budget. we, I don't know, we, do we retire those on a five-year cycle? Retire what? When we're talking our equipment plan. So if we buy a $96,000 vehicle, are we retiring it in five years? Is that our payment schedule usually on those? Because um, you know, if we go above a certain, is it five or six years, then it has to go to vote, right? I don't know that. I don't know. Five, mm -hmm. yes. So I think we stay at five, right? But however, you know, the plan is obviously, hopefully, that eventually you're saving enough money that you're either making a down payment or you're buying this stuff outright so that you're not, you know, making a right. loan payment. But yes, you would do a five year. So um, could we, um, I don't know, I'm just, with the options that we get, could you just include in there for me um, what we think the estimated payment schedule per, per year would be yeah, for that? Yeah, I can do Just so we can see um, if we add this much in equipment, where, where we have to look to try to balance that, you know? This is the way I'm thinking. And um, to it, I'm not sure, and you have money in the equipment committee, in the uh, highway equipment fund too, so you'll be able to look at that, maybe there's an offset to this purchase. I mean, eventually, you know, as things roll along in a perfect world, you, you put your trucks on a, you know, eight year rotation and whatever your tractor is in your grader, and then each year as you, you know, you purchase either outright or grader's tough, but at least you maybe have a heck of a good down payment on it, and then, you know, that's the cycle works. And can you also put on the on the equipment schedule? I know that we we have it in our placeholders of where certain equipment needs to be replaced now. But can we actually put on there what the require or what the recommended retirement date of that piece of course, should yeah, be? Yeah, yeah you'll get even if right there. now we show it a year longer. Can we just so that we can make that? Well, that's yeah, absolutely. That'll be in there, and they'll tell you what year you're going to do what. Okay. Perfect world of trading values, but because I know it was, you know, a couple years ago they were pushed up <coughs> back a little bit. I know, and it's you can't, yeah. Okay. What, what, what are we doing with the uh, case track? I got that. We looked into doing the box plate for like mud season uh, last year. Um, money fell through. And money in the budget for yeah, we looked into trying to get a sign over for it, attachments. Can you buy from it? That tractor could be a, the, your roadside mower. That's what I was going to say. It's not? Why? Uh, what? Are you able to go it? Um, it's not set up hydraulically, I guess. But that's what I've been told. So I could be loaded into it. Yeah. That was the original intent for that tractor, anyways, was to put a brush on it. Why is it why is outside? Why is it out in the shed where it has a building made for us? Uh, it's at our shop. They right. took, they, the, it, it But for went, source of water department stuff, I guess you they guys, it in. Didn't you buy it from the no. No. highway from the sewer? Right. Yeah, I think technically it's still. Are, are both the bays down there being used? Down the, I believe there, I haven't been down there. I believe it might be something just to look into, Therese. If water fittings and stuff, and I think the other bay is uh, uh, mortgage truck. Mortgage truck. truck. Okay, so what's in the other bay? And I'm going to because if there's if it's open, you ought to put it down there, you know. Right. And I'll have to look because I have. What's under coverage? It's not shut. Right. But Susan Wonder flies. I mean, it's all shut back. That truck needs to go somewhere. So it maybe go back there. I'm going to ask because Greg and I had this discussion and Tim about the highway department purchasing the track right? and I'm drawing a blank right now. What came out? I'll have to go back and look. Um, mm -hmm. Highway file. But I'll ask Tim about that. So maybe you take the tracker back through the winter. I'll ask him. Who's the opposite of going to get tractors? That's why we can't get rid of them. Trade in. It's not, from my understanding of it, we cannot. Only the next tractor will take is a bush hauler on the back. 
it won't work to do the stuff around town. Or so you can't put that wheel in the good car so they won't have to. Yeah, I can't remember if somebody told us it only takes a brush on. It won't no, take that's, any that's the only thing it's the and all that's the bush on. But the bush on is not going to do us any good, so the tractor's not going to do it. But Tim came to stand in the sewer department and he can't spray sewer anymore. So we got the tractor set up and said, nobody wants it, but my understanding is there's a local guy around here that was interested in purchasing that tractor. Well, that, belongs, they use that, to that, that belongs to the sewer department yeah, so because it, that was bought by federal money when we put that sewer plant in. Exactly. So, so it belongs to the sewer plant. If it sells. It belongs to the sewer department, too, but it's not from the sewer department. It's good to get rid of it, get the sewer money. Right. Yeah, it's exactly. Yeah. I'll ask him about that. I'll ask him what he knows about if it can do a, um, be the roadside mower, and I will then, um, yeah, you're right. If nobody's using it, then you're right, Doug. You should sell it. Absolutely. Why not? So, all right, I'll ask him if it, um, what Tim knows about it. You know, him, probably some I'm going to get that much for it. It's a 30-some-odd-year-old <laughs> tractor. I think it's 110 horse. All right, I'll. Somewhere. Was it? Okay. Don't have mine down. So I can have a lot of balls. If we sell it, it might be for some of the equipment that needs to be fixed. Okay. But the money belongs to the second. Yeah, except yeah, for us. Sorry, we got to talk about this. So Tim has his own nation, so that's fine. Well, right. maybe we should start yeah. charging them rent. Storage. It's some problem. Yeah, but more concern his truck there. So it's a two way street. Sorry, right, we'll find out. Now, I don't know if the more instructs in there. Bay with the shelving with all the water fittings. I don't know. Uh, that's I'll ask. What's the answer? Okay. I can ask. All right. So is everybody um, good with at the next meeting the information that we'll be getting from Therese and the Public Works and the decisions that we'll probably be faced on making? <coughs> okay. Any further discussion on that? Or are we good? What's your favorite thing? Yeah, just going back to the one comment, so we've got the uh, street cuts all throughout town. And have, by the end of August, we'll have all this back. I finally have heard that we've knocked off the baby and um, those are going to be done. Um, next week, we are going to be getting material light and we can have material to throw in them after the last couple of rains. Um, Camp Brook is a mess, so I don't know when exactly the is going to work on getting those patched. Um, but they're all blown out. Everything on the shoulders, the culverts, uh, replacement up there. I have them on the Do you have a tarp? Do you have tarps? On, well, what do you have for tarps on the back of our trucks? Are they just open netted tarps or are they yeah, closed tarp? Or? Truck tarp. I'm just saying, if, if, if you go get some hot mix or have someone deliver some hot mix to you, you know, I'll go out and break it. You get a roller, or I have a roller. A rake and roller, and it could be done in. No, I'm talking all of Tampa. Oh, I was yeah, talking about Paul's downtown. I was talking about Paul's downtown. I was talking about this all over. Yeah, so the, I can answer that. So I um, had the pre bid, the paving pre bid today meeting for um, Camp Brooks. So we have one, we have one person who came, and um, they were questioning why we want it done so fast. And obviously, we have 180 days from the day of the event to stay within um, the state paying 100%. If we get out of that, we're looking at 10%. So the end date for that would be October. Um, if you calculated 180 days from April 15th, so you're probably looking at that. So Camp Brook is not going to be done until then. And if this contractor, um, they said that they would let us know if they weren't gonna bid. And if they're not gonna bid, the whole thing. I'm not sure what happens then. You'll have to talk about temporary paving, et cetera. But basically, it's yours to maintain, I think, until, yeah, I until October. And as soon as you do that, this, you know, but remember that the guys, if they keep track of the hours, materials, that will all go under that, you know, they, but unfortunately, best case scenario, beginning of October, probably. I'm oh, sorry. In that vein, still looking for someone to oversee the FEMA work. I have several people. Um, I'm waiting for a call back from 
Dave Gilderdale, and then my next on the list is a gentleman named Dan Bertel. He works at the state, I don't think he's that time, but. Well, listen, I've been turned down enough. We'll ask. Anyway, so. I think he's a finals engineer or something, isn't he? Yeah, he's worked with these guys quite a while. I've worked for the state. I can make it a traffic job, though. Oh, is that what he has now? So, um. Yeah, feel free. Anybody that wants to grab my hat, you yeah. can run with it. So we're still looking. What's entailed so to it? Interested, huh? What's entailed to it? Globe slips or? Well, right, right now it's like, um, right now it's going and laying everything out for the contractors. Okay. So nothing I want to know. Um, so like for the first one, I spent many hours out there, uh, well, locating the work. Um, putting the beginning and end marks for everything. Did, didn't Greg have that all done? I was going to say, me and Greg didn't mind all that out. There's, there's just stakes out there. Stakes are missing. There's just numbered stakes out there. So everything's laid out. Um, updated quantities, because some of the quantities aren't exactly where. Um, so everything's been updated to get to the point where the contractors can do the work and someone doesn't have to be there babysitting them all day long. So. Um, so it took a little bit of pre-work and then there's now it's like... Of, there's a lot of areas that I saw when I drove around getting the GPS's that should have been marked to start with. I mean, they're just, they're worse than some of the areas that were flying. Well, I think there's some areas that have happened since then, too. Or, or some areas that were yeah, part of FEMA that have started to grow a little bit because of the, yeah, well, it will. these other ones. So. Water erosion. Um, I, I guess, like... Like, ideally for me, like, if we can't find somebody, like, I have no problem continuing to, like, help get out in front of it, stake, um, stake the scope of work that should be out there, um, do, do the prep work. If someone wants to, you know, check in once a day with the contractor to, I mean, it, I'll do that it's pretty you... dummy proof at this point. I mean, there's literally start and stop the, for stone I'm... ditching where we, <laughs> I'll, be the, line, I'll, I'll be I'd the line dummy. the pipe out, I'd turn it on that. <laughs> Well, that's good. Um, so, well, you can help. Yeah, I will. I'll, 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 I'll do the dumb work. If, you know, it's just really now, it's because you, not to say that people take advantage of you, but if someone's not watching it daily, yeah. um, you know, I, I guess the thing right now is, you know, we have Rogers, and then tonight we're going to talk about, right now, the other two bid results, right. which, you know, one is a company we're already working with, one's another company, so that probably what's going to happen now is there's going to be two things going on at the same time. So it's going to get really. Rogers has already started uh, his section, right? Started right. today, yeah. Really, really, so. so somebody needs to go look at him once in a while. Um, I did today. Okay. Um, so well, we'll stop in tomorrow. Start here. And I'm hoping next week with the carburetor to get up there and start hauling in some part pack from the Harveys and start taking our end of it. So we'll be working with kind of short ones. Because that's going to be the next step. Is you know, we have somebody who's like, whatever, we'll just start Lilliesville Road that we're going to be doing with the FEMA work, um, FEMA money, but there are other areas on that road that need to be addressed as well. Every, every road has um, problems right now. Because in some cases, in some cases, if we don't identify that, then the work that we're doing for the FEMA work could get jeopardized, you know. That's what it was so, last week. Because uh, FEMA only, the thing is that, you know, it's the same with the contractors. Is FEMA only pays for exactly what is broken. They don't pay for anything that you may need to do to fix what's broken. You know, so it's uh, difficult. Next meeting, we'll move the tables that way. Well, they, yeah. they were already set up, so we weren't reinventing the wheel today, so it worked out. But, um, so just getting into if so we don't have anything else on have the vehicle. Cell phone number, so he keeps uh, it I'll, I'll make sure I get it from home. So you guys can, that would be great. Um, so getting into that, we had, um, yeah, so, so the only um, the only bid that didn't have a fancy Southwest or East Quadrant bid yeah. name to it, we started that one today, which is the uh, Lilyville, uh, Campbell, Whittier piece. Um, so I, I've been told that the Lilyville, Lilyville and Whittier will probably be mostly completed by the end of this week. Uh, might spill in a little bit next week, and then we'll be going to Camp Bell at some point next week to start that. So, thinking of like two, two to two and a half weeks to get that all done, um, which is one of the larger contracts that we have so far. Um, and then tonight we have. There's been two other bids that have happened since then. 
Um, the one that got open today, the other one that was in our packet uh, that got open last week, maybe. Right, and I left you all the results of the one today. I left them at your spots. Yeah. And the other stuff you had was something that Dave Eddie had requested, which is all the materials list. You can see it by point. Those points line up to little circle points on the map. So if you're right. curious as to what goes with what bid, that goes to your answers. Um, so I have a question about that. Okay. On the east quadrant. Yeah. Point nine and ten. Mm -hmm. Who fixed that already? Who fixed it? Yeah, it's all fixed. Uh, it could have been. It could have been something that was temporarily done. Was a hazard or something? I was told that we it's fixed it. Just a bump. It was a bump, but good, good know, good speed bump. Well, then the good news is when Chris goes out or to go out to look at that work. What we found is that maybe there, if there's some changes, that might free us up for Chris to be able to say, okay, here's this was in the big price. I was wondering because so, that's right on the Bethel Randolph line. Our yeah. friend Randolph said, oh, maybe. I'll come over or we did it. Or, maybe they did. How did that work? That would be good because yeah. it give Chris a little wiggle room. So if he saw something else he wanted to add, we'd have that. Well, I mean, there are some that. areas that have been... Um, Arnold Road. Some, some things that have been addressed during the emergency period, which was, you know, the first now this was 30 days. This was broken uh, last week. And, and then there are... Just the east. Yeah. You said 9 and 10? 9 and 10. And then there, there are other things that... Uh, and like I said, it's, it's ever-changing. Is that on the Arnold Road, Dave? Yep. Okay, that still flag for ditching down through there. Yeah. When Doug graded, he, he filled in that washout that nobody caught back in April. Oh, okay. So, it'll be... No, I took him over for... The charter to be out there at five miles there. An hour. And when I came back through, it was gone. Yeah. Well, uh, and then that's what I've been doing on the first section was identifying there were some areas that maybe we didn't need to do or there's some areas that got extended a little bit. So that's kind of what we've been... Right one. So we did have um, the one that bid um, last week was the southwest quadrant areas. Um, for anybody that doesn't know exactly what the southwest is, um, is kind of the kind of the same area of what the the work's going on right now. Um, so it's Ringe, um, Thayer, Woodland. Um, uh, Brink, uh, Dunham Roads, so kind of hooks on to the one that is being done now, um, and the the low bidder for that one was uh, W. B. Rogers again, who who is on the Louisville section currently, and the uh, the low bid amount was sixty three thousand nine hundred seventy five dollars. And if you if you want, I can read the other ones into record. If you want to do that, Lisa, let me read the rest of the bid results. If you want them into the record, we probably ought to. So okay. Um, so that was the low bid. Um, second bid was K and S Construction. Okay. And that one was eighty five thousand even. What was W. Rogers' bid? Oh, uh, sixty-three thousand nine hundred seventy-five dollars. Okay. Okay. And, go ahead. And then the third bidder was uh, Du Bois Construction. Okay. And their amount was ninety-one thousand sixty-seven dollars and fifty cents. And the fourth bidder was not excavating, N-O-T-T. -T. Okay. And that one was $117,050. $117,050. Yep. And then the final bidder was Blue Mountain Trucking. And their bid amount was one hundred twenty-four thousand four hundred seventy-five dollars. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So, um, so the the 
little bitter was the um, W.B. Rogers, who's in that area, started work already. So I would entertain a motion, unless anybody objects to the bid, I would entertain a motion to accept the bid from W.B. Rogers for, uh, for $63,975 to do the Southwest Quadrant <coughs> FEMA. So Could you amend that so that I could sign that contract? Sure. It could be signed by Therese. So moved. Okay. Second. Second by Lynn Lane. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, I have it. Are there time frames attached to these? There are, yes. I don't have them, but oh, there are. Yeah, they're yeah. 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 the bid pack. And they're kind of staggered a little bit. Each yeah. bid is off by maybe two weeks. You know, it's, it's kind of staggered. Like yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, we're putting a, a lot into WB Rogers. Well, I think the one that's going on right now is going to get done by. <coughs> in July. And, and he actually and chose then, not to bid on the Southwest Quadrant because he got the first two bids. And no, he didn't bid on the East one. I mean, bid on the East one, yeah, excuse right, me, because he got, the, he first got two. the first one and this one, and so he chose not to bid on the East Quadrant specifically yeah. because of that reason, and he wants to bid on one later. So. And I believe the Southwest one has a date of like second week in August or something, something like that. I can't remember, honestly. So. And... And then the East Quadrant, which for anybody that wants to know, the East Quadrant is um, North Main, Finley Bridge, Sanders, Christian Hill. Should we go up Christian Hill? I don't <laughs> care. I can take that one, <laughs> take that one off. No. Christian Hill, um, Arnold Road. I think I got them all. Um, Nothing on Barry. Yeah. So we had um, that bid today, and the and the low bidder was Dr. McCullough excavating. And the amount on that. Mm -hmm. is a hundred and three thousand three hundred and seventy three dollars and then there's some other bidders here so the second bidder was Dubois construction okay with a bid amount of a hundred and eighteen thousand Six hundred and fifteen dollars. Okay. And third bidder was K and S construction. Okay. I like their whole numbers. Hundred and forty thousand even. They don't mess around. Is that you're right? The other, one's <laughs> the other one was, yeah. Uh -huh. um, and then and then Blue Mountain Trucking. Hundred and forty four thousand seven hundred twenty six dollars. Okay. And then Max Trucking and Excavating. M A K apostrophe S. Okay. That was a hundred and eighty six thousand five hundred thirty seven dollars. Oh wait, say that again. Hundred and eighty six thousand uh -huh. five hundred Thirty-seven dollars, and that's max trucking and excavating. Yep. Okay. And then the last run was Avery excavation. Yep. And that was two hundred twelve thousand six hundred two dollars. So the apparent low was VR McCullough excavating, and this is for the East Quadrant. Um, so I would entertain a motion, unless someone has, objects to the low bidder, um, of using DR McCullough excavating in the amount of $103,373. And Teresa allowed to sign the contract. And Teresa allowed to sign the contract. So move. Second. Ooh, beat you. I'm glad it. I'm glad it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. It's got to be give and take. 
you know, this is how a board works well. Um, I, I don't know if just I got the information, but if the board has it, maybe Therese just update the board with, you gave me that helpful one of all the dates, completion dates. And yeah, I think I Okay. Yeah, I, think I, I know Mo's going to know it really soon. I know. He's going to know it. This is going to be out there every day. Oh, you mean as far as the schedule that gave you the bid, the... Yeah, I mean, we probably don't need the bid. Free bid. Yeah, maybe. It was in their last packet. Maybe if now we can just update it with this is the person doing the work and oh, this sure. is the one needs to be done by or something. Okay. And oh, done by yeah. Okay. That way okay. we can all stay all right. up to date with that. Uh, okay. Anybody have any questions with any of the FEMA work? Um, so, Therese has. We have one more. Yep. We have one more gravel bid that's out mm -hmm. currently. Yep. We have the Camp Brook. Yep, that's done. That went out or had the pre bid today. today. Yep. That the bids are due towards the end of the month. Yeah, everything is due. Anything that I did, the pre bid at nine thirty for Pinello Bridge, ten o'clock was. Northwest Quadrant. I lost track. Of yes. The that yeah, was at 10. Which is Gilead. And, and yeah, that was yeah. 10, and then Camp Brook was at 11. So okay. all of those are due. The Friday is like the 19th. You have to have questions to me by then, and those will be um, awarded on the 22nd. Second. The next select board okay. meeting, you'll do Nello Bridge, um, the paving contract. And the Northwest. And the Northwest. Bing, bang, boom. So then cool. the only thing left is. The um, pea vine river road pea vine piece. Pea vine piece, which I'm waiting yeah. for because I need the river engineer to let me know if he's going to engineer the culvert upsize. We also had sent him, uh, Chris Bowman and I had sent the same guy two possibilities to afford the back, the bank, um, the bank work and stabilization. Yeah. And I haven't heard from back about those two things. And as well as um, there's some work. Uh, it, like material that needs to maybe go down by the pump station at the Bethel Mills. And now um, we think that maybe what got missed was the road to one of the reservoirs. So this last day will be a catch all. Do we have a time when we have to have all of our FEMA work bid by? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Or is it just complete? Or? Yeah, not that I'm aware of. And, and we would, would be well along the process if, if the river engineer get back to us because I'm kind of stuck in a holding pattern because we have if we have to engineer that culvert then I'm going to have two rivers include that in the bid for the permanent bridge engineer be like so, a type thing. Thing. so but I just need an answer to yeah. that. okay so that's where we're stuck with that right now I did get an um, email today and I actually CC you on it Chris um, I have uh, next Tuesday at like 8 30 I have a half an hour home with the female people to let them know where we stand and start all that work. Let's so. give him Mo's number. Yeah, give him Mo's number. So, um, He's I'm going to talk to him. I'm going to talk to him, but it's more like no. So, I'll yeah. give you the number for him to get So we'll let you know. Um, we'll update the Facebook page. That's right. So, that, um, so that's where all Just the people are. Just Mo's picture. Stands. Need anything? Call this guy. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, I'll, so that's what situation now. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. Great. Anything else in regards to the FEMA work? Pretty good? Okay. Then we had the residents at 459 Sugar Hill Road. Um, for anyone that doesn't know the history of that piece, we, the state, or the state, yeah, the, would the state like it? Yeah, right. Um, the town had acquired that piece of property through tax. Tax sale. Sale. Yep. Um, I don't know, probably three years ago. Yeah. Yep. Um, and, yeah. And then we, we've had uh, an individual that has been living there ever since then. Um, and we had tasked Greg with starting the process on, you know, evicting the person. Well, I'll back up. First, we went back to the individual a year or so ago yep. about, you know, wanting to acquire the property back, you know, pay the back, you know, taxes on it. Yep, they, want, and, they were going to get a mortgage. And yeah. That didn't so happen. It, there's nothing there. It's been 
uh, really no response on it. So, and we're paying insurance on that because of ours. So, yeah. so I mean, we have acquired a piece of property that you know that we have a liability of somebody living in there that you know last I checked the living conditions weren't. And they're still there. Weren't very time. par, but, uh, and they're there. So the next step. Uh, the next step is to start the eviction process, um, which from what I understand with the state of Vermont is to have our lawyer uh, draft up the uh, eviction proposal to get signed by a judge. Yeah. And then to get um, delivered. You have to serve it. Um, and and there's it, a, a little timeline too with that, so we just want to make sure. That was one thing I was going to ask the lawyer to lay out for me is what's the time? There's a specific time frame in Vermont. If yeah. you don't adhere to it, you're going to start all over. Don't yep. need that. So basically, all I was looking for was just a motion to authorize me to move forward with this the eviction process. So me. <laughs> okay. All in favor? All right. All right. All right. Who seconded? Only <coughs> got back in there. Paul was so <laughs> Mo's been over here training me. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm going to take over motions oh, soon. <laughs> Well, Mo, Mo is usually leading the motions. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, all right. Any further discussion on that one? We're good. Okay. Uh, and then we had um, the zoning administrator slash assistant zoning administrator um, appointments, uh, being that you know Therese right now is serving in the interim capacity of town manager. Um, I guess I guess on my end that you are a zoning administrator because you no, are a certain function. Even if you have function, a town manager, you still, but, in order to adhere to the law, which is the 24 BSA 4448, even if you hire someone, they still have their appointment still so has to point, yeah. the planning okay. commission. The only reason I wanted it done was a because it's the right way to do it, and b because um, you know if we had ever had anything pending. And um, you know, we denied a zoning application, they took us to environmental court, and then Kelly and I need to prove that we were, you know, that you were there legitimately and not, not you know, that could get thrown out. Based so, on. would would you two w would be serving with the planning commission? Yeah, they appointed right? us. They, there's something in your packet that said they were, they basically they um, nominated us, and the select board has to approve that nomination. Okay. And do they, do they have the ability to do that right now? The PC? Yeah. I, I don't even think they have enough people to move oh, I, an know. item right now. But. Well, I asked Andrew to do it. I think there are only two and people. His, you can see our correspondence so, in there. Um, I think they need their bylaws so that there's a quorum uh, of people there. Well, I guess the quorum would be two because I think there's only two of them yeah. um, right now. Oh, they're looking for planning commissions. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, uh, Brad had gotten done, I don't know, it's a, wonderful job. a few months ago or something. That's a tough job. That might be, may want to circle the wagons on sending out another advertisement yeah, on I'll anybody who wants to be uh, part of the planning commission I'll there. I'll let Kelly know. Kelly. All right. So we will, we'll need a, um, a motion to not only appoint Therese as the zoning administrator, but also to have Kelly Hill um, be appointed as the assistant zoning administration and uh, and through the appointments there wouldn't be any you know a, additional monetary no. value to that no. other than Kelly already so. does a lot of the zoning and did it for Greg and now you know so for her and I you know she does most of it and then uh, I read it on email stuff out and he's covered when Greg is out yeah so somewhere he had it so she knows it and uh, we just want to have our basis. I don't know where I put the piece of paper, but. What is it open for? Oh, uh, you had the language on there, but. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's got buried in here somewhere. Just, yeah, for 24 PSA. So. Um, so basically, yeah. The Come on, Lindley. So moved. Oh. Oh, man. <laughs> Okay. All right, Lindley. Lindley's on the second. All right. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 And 
We have the Vermont State Revolving Fund, which is our yearly signature of. Oh, this is the new thing. Oh, this no, is, that's the new one. This is right. why uh, Wayne Elliott was here. This is the yep. bond bank loan document. So I pulled out what you would need to sign. Some of them you'll see require just Chris's signature, and some of them require everybody's signature. Therese, paragraph 17 here. I'm to make sure I understand. So the town pays the contractor and then the town has to apply for this disbursement? Right. Yep, which is kind of what he talked about. Um, and um, what Wayne was talking to you guys about when he was here. So yes, basically that's so that's the loan, that's the offers. And um, I think the whole loan is for 146200 Yeah, that's what we've done all along, is we have paid, and then we request um, free payment. So where does the money come from to pay out that part of the money? Well, it's, it's out, of, out of the water fund, but we don't have a line item for it because it's going to come in and out within the, you know, within the same fiscal year. So we don't. I had no idea about this or how much it was at the time we did the budget either. So, um, but it was going to still come in now. You'll see a revenue for it and you'll see an right. expense for it. Right. But where, maybe I don't understand. Where does the revenue come from? I mean, there's a timeline, obviously. It still didn't happen. Right. They're, they're actually, happen. they're pretty quick about it. Yeah. Once we get it and then we're able to, you know, record it. And actually, Elvis and Elliot are very good about it, too. So, um, so that so they will so they're always really good about it. They know what their turnaround time is. So yeah, we end up holding the bag for it until we get our money back. Is there any short term, I guess short term involvement associated with no. kind of like what we do to school and stuff like that? No, I don't have a tan. I mean, well, well this town will have tax anticipation though, because so if if they were and you know, we pay their bills, so if they were short, we would draw from the tan. But no But water doesn't yeah, mm -hmm. doesn't No, because we pay all their bills. So, um, so no, I'm not anticipating it being a problem. I mean, in the past, they actually have been really good about it. Um, they know our issues, and we pay it. We just give them a copy of the invoice and the check, and submit it. Actually, they're they're pretty quick. Okay. I know, and I'd be surprised. It's, it's the same for us. Get out there with a big chunk of money, and we're waiting for them. Yeah, no, no, but it's it's not bad either. The amount, and no, they're they're actually very good about it. And they'll do what you see. So they'll actually transfer right into the bank for us. So it even hits our bank account quickly. Anybody else have any questions in regards to it? Right. So. so. So we'll do a motion. For both of them. Yeah, for Lisa. Is so there Lisa. anything you have to sign on there, please? Or is that just Me, it's all for you guys. No, okay. and Pam has to sign some, but so for, um, so for um, so this is Vermont Municipal Bond Bank for $146,200, zero percent interest over five years. Zero percent. I get many stuff. Seems many times every day. The repayment doesn't depend on the Right. There is a. Um, so it goes from the August 1st, 2024 to the first payment to August 1st, 2028 is the maturity date. So yeah, so you end up getting the work done. And then what will end up happening most likely is this will get rolled into the bigger bond. So you want to take some more um, I think really you're just looking for, well, in this case, maybe, yeah, Lisa, just because it's odd that the payment isn't. Going to, re going to start until 2024. Usually, just have the maturity date. 8 1 2024. Yep, 2024 to 8 1 2028. And it's to Vermont? Vermont Municipal Bond Bank.
Uh, they're going to have to make a motion to authorize the board to sign the terms, I would say, to sign the general obligation note. I'd move to allow the board to sign the general obligation note. Second. Okay. All in favor? All right. All right. Here's all the we'll get you trained up. <laughs> Here's all the pieces of paper I put them together. Thank, Thank, you, Thank, Thank you, Alan. So you can see some of them is just Chris and some of them are all you guys, so you can flip your mom. So you had the motion and you should tuck in uh, all the details of that. If I can edit it, if you want to So if I say motion to approve Vermont Municipal Bond Bank, 146 blah, 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 yeah. zero percent interest over five years, and to sign a general obligation note. Yeah. Whew, that's not important. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Get everything in there. It looks like because we're <clears throat> we're not breaking the threshold that they have, so there's no additional audit requirements or anything. Because no, it said if you go above seven hundred fifty thousand, then you have to do a federal audit in one year. Oh yeah. So which is actually when you can get your subrecipient grant award grant paper, which we just got, and I called the gentleman today because they included in it all five million dollars of FEMA from Irene. So I called the gentleman, left a message, and said, we did a single audit. That is another, like, up to 10 grand. I said, we did a single audit after Irene. So maybe we received our three cent money, but we didn't get all five mil in this round. So right. I'm hoping that I would consider otherwise we're looking at another amount of money to do a second. Oh, that yes, audit. I wouldn't think they'd make us do considering we had one after I read. So I, I called, I think his name was John Becker, and I left a message because my eyes got moved out when I saw that. Yeah, I was reading that. Yeah, so that's because that's total all your rewards in one year. So I don't know. So hopefully he has an answer. The answer is don't worry. <laughs> All right. Well, that'll just have to be something that going forward we'll have to take into consideration when we're setting the budget for any, you know, large yeah. projects like water or something if we're going to have to. Like right now, what is it, 20000 that we're paying for audit services yeah. for the next three years? But it, there might be some additional audit expenses yeah. Yeah, because of that money that we have to. If we're going to get a bunch of grant money. Right. Sure. We'll have to. It's not about debt because this is a grant. That's what it is. Right. Okay. But yeah. Well, remember with the with the water, there's the potential of the yeah, right. large grant. Exactly. So we'll see. when we're budgeting, we may want to. Uh -huh. Add some in there for that. Okay, right. <coughs> and hopefully by the end we'll have a clear picture of the municipal bond bank or something. Right. So, Therese, is this a loan for the municipal bond bank yes. or a loan from them? It's a loan. It's a loan. It's a zero okay. percent right. interest loan. Yeah. I just want to make sure I have the right yeah. verbiage. On the but it'll end up kind of all going into the bond when we do it. Yeah, it's like we're just kind of so lining our ducks up, you know. But yeah. all right. any further discussion on that? And we had some facility use policy amendments. Yep. So you can see in there that Kelly. Um, Kelly would like to make a motion to update the facility use policy under the hours of use. She would like um, the addition of no overnight parking or camping. This is due to the issue we've had at Key Line and possibly somewhere else where we've got to have some water. So we did, in hospital, did um, move them along as it did the old policy to tell you the hours of. It did say, um, she passed, I thought it said. Because it's only usable from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m., yes. that kind of out, 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 makes it so camping is not yes. allowed. But um, sign well, we hadn't really talked about was language about overnight parking. Um, yeah. So I think she was just thinking maybe we would like to cover our bases. And I also... Um, I guess there's a little confusion there with 
you know, using the facility and parking, you know, I guess. You know, I guess how you look at it is most people would say using the facility would be, you know, the van shell or, or, or the yeah. gazebo or doing things around yeah. there. And, where we do have some individuals that are parking vehicles and staying for large periods of time. Well, it's actually a prohibition. It's not. She just put out her hours of use. You can see where it says no overnight parking or camping, just an additional. So is the second page the uh, revision? Yeah. Uh, this one right here. Is it possible? Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm sorry, what was the question? So is it possible to format what we got in the packet to be closer to what was here before? Because this, this kind of runs on. I mean, it's not really formatted. Um, what, this? The new one. Yeah. <coughs> it is run on, you know, addresses and stuff all run on. It's not really, uh -huh. if we could format it more to be like the old one. Um, a little sure. more readable. I don't see why not. Um, why? Can I ask? Because the new one, for example, um, things just kind of run on through it. It's not set up mm -hmm. like this one here. This was the original. You know, yeah, I saw that. This is the yeah. new one. Okay. I don't mean, see it. Mean, it's not going. Okay. About a third of the way down, it says Bethel Town Hall, the address there, Bethel, Vermont, and then the 2S. What's the 2S? Park. That was I mean, it just kind of kind of runs together. This is a little, I think, a little more readable. Okay. It's just my. So you want it reformatted, and then you guys want to add it to next week's or next time's agenda, or? Well, is that actually a prohibition about the, you know, the night parking as opposed to how we use? Um, she just put it in. Yeah, the, yeah I don't know. I mean, I guess really. I'm getting. It. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know. There, there's been a couple of different people. Yeah. I've seen them when I go to do the yeah. water quality testing. Yeah. Pick there was kind of one more long term resident, and then there was oh, okay. recently a shorter term person that okay. we had down there. Um, I mean, I, I, I see Paul's point. In, one thing when putting together policies that often policies do have to be written in a, I don't want to call it a more formal format, but um, than just paragraph based. But I mean, if we want to bring it back before the board and clarify the two S and have a reformat, sure. And re I mean, I think we're covered technically, anyways. I mean, you are. It's not like we if we don't act on it tonight that Oscar can't do his job. No, no. Because I think we're covered. Do we need to get any, like, do we need to get any new signage to put down there that might be clearer? I don't know what it says now. Is there a There's one, I think the sign there's says. There's one sign there. You know, yeah. It's dark, you're out of here. I think, yeah. Yeah, I think the Oscar said that when he, now yeah. you say that. Okay. It's by the gate, yeah. or it was. Yeah. I, yeah. Last time I was there, yeah, there was a sign. All the was left here after 9, 8, 9 p.m. would be pushed into the river. Perfect. Okay. So we seem to be all for it. Just uh, yeah. we'll Housekeeping. reformat it and send it back. Oh, it is. Yeah, I'm sure it is. I, I mean, that's my guess. It's possibly this. Stealing Lindley's thunder, be able to make a motion. See what he did there? That was clever. It's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> All right. And we had the select. Did anybody else have anything else in regards to the facility use policy? And the select board meeting minutes from June 24th. Anybody have any issues with those? I move you. Not with, not with the minutes per se, but I wanted to follow up on a couple of the items that were in, it, in the minutes. Okay. But not with the minutes themselves. The only thing I thought is I, somehow I thought I missed a page or something. It seemed like I had one page that was missing in mine, but. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. But, five uh, pages. 
when I was reading through it. It, yeah. it went from one page into a next one, and I was like, I think I missed something here, but. Maybe there's a double side. Uh, maybe, yeah. 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 They're double sided. They're double sided. Oh, yeah. I like How do you get five? Three. Oh, I got five. So maybe we are missing. Yeah. Five, three, four, five. So, you know what? Anybody can see. See, you guys <laughs> thought I was crazy. <laughs> 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 Not crazy. I, knew that was, I was reading it, I was like. They only scan one side of them. You guys scan, yeah. scan yeah. the other side. Because yeah. I was reading through it, and I'm like, man, we just, I mean, just missed something here. Like, we went from one topic to <laughs> well, the next. Lisa, dude. I'm like, no problem. Maybe I'm. <laughs> Just put these off to the next uh, meeting so you all can read them. Yeah. Okay, we'll do that. I'll you didn't bring, bring the book anyways. Huh? You didn't bring the book anyways. Hey, it wasn't in the bag, didn't come. <laughs> so, uh, um, so do you want to add it to the next? Because, you know, I need yeah, we'll just, three of you uh, Yeah, we'll just yeah, yeah, we'll approve them at the next meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I thought I had. <laughs> I was reading it, but I was going along, and then all of a sudden I was like, oh, we just missed a bunch of stuff. Something. Yeah. But well, you can ask your question. How I feel better. Um, the two gals that were in at the last meeting, Michelle uh, Packard, what, what, how did we land on that? And uh, Lisa Delgado? Both very happy. Um, Alan went out the next day, happened to see Lisa. Um, they, um, so whatever the situation was, he worked it out with her. So, um, do you, she's do you want to just, I know you had it in the communications to us, but do you want to just talk briefly about the Cowdery Trust? Oh, yeah, yep. Um, was, um, but yeah, was that your other question? Was no, that it? No, well, just Lisa and, and Michelle. So, so they're both They're good. both dealt with, great. Both good. Yep. So, um, Thank you. you're welcome. So as far as, yes, Cowdery, um, that was on the list of um, items. And I did speak to, I had spoken to Carol Ketchum. He called probate court and said, you know, we cannot change the bequest without incurring legal fees. Right. And which is kind of what he and I had thought anyways, but he was, Carol was kind enough to take the time to call probate. And then I said, well, how would you like to call Jack Cowdery? He said, I'd happy to. So he called Jack as well and said, look, you know, this is the bequest, this is the way the will is, this is the way your parents left it. We're not going to incur legal costs to try to change this. You know, your parents, you know, they set the terms, and we had, we had so much um, money per year that we could use, and with interest rates being what they are, it's you know, not what it used to be. Um, so I realized that he would like to see some work done in the memorial, but I just, I, I just don't really know what he's looking for over time. Obviously, Camp Road has been built up. That's just the way of it. So the memorial has lowered in and I think now it's filled with gravel and um, you know I'm not really sure what the answer is. It's a memorial whether he's going to be willing to come in and put some material in it to build it up to where he would like it or what, but with the stipend that we're allowed in the bequest, it's not a lot of money. So um, So that might circle back around here at some point. <laughs> we'll see. Okay. We'll see how um, but Jack was fine. So um, with with Mr. with Carol Ketchum. Um, so, you should, so that's what I know about that. Anything else in regards to the meeting minutes of last time? You can only quiz us on pages one, three, or five. <laughs> <laughs> Paul might tell you, Bill. <laughs> Paul can read off two and four. <laughs> but, okay. And then we had um, the, you know, the select board outstanding issue list. Um, yes. Which you know we pr probably need to 
if so we haven't put our input in, we need to start yeah. what we'd like to see back on there. So um, one of the questions is that I had. So um, and you can, and I, what I did was I put a line through the stuff that you dealt with. I know uh, Paul was the one who was curious about the parking permit program. So I asked Kelly to put that information in here. Mm -hmm. So it looks like that's been handled. Um, there was a question about doing a speed study on Main Street with the bulb outs installed. So my, I was curious about that. Was that um, just something you had batted around or something you actually wanted to ask two rivers to do? We, every year they give us the ability to do, I think, up to three roads or something. I probably should ask somebody who's here, but yeah. it's either two or three roads yeah, that we sure. get for free. Well, yeah, not for free, yeah. but part of our membership. And last year we did the village. Right? We did the village and and then so we did, did you do it uh, after the bulb outs were installed or before? We did it while they were installed, I believe. But I don't know I, you know, I don't know. Maybe maybe they would know I almost want to think that they did one while they were installed and then after. I remember them it occurred uh, now they say that right going down, but I don't remember I guess why? What are you doing on track? What are you What's the goal here? Are we did one last year because surprisingly, surprisingly, it didn't. Surprisingly, it didn't go in the way we thought it would. Right, it didn't show the because um, it was what we had thought. The idea was to take the speed from 25 down to I think what under 20 was the was the required speed to get the decibel level down to 60 or whatever or below 60. Um, which one would have thought that with the bulb outs in it, mm -hmm. because they are so intrusive to the road and they narrow the road in so much, yeah, yeah. which they don't. But, um, but they keep sending me messages on that, um, <laughs> that, the, that things would slow down, the decibel level would come down. And we found that it actually the speed was just the same, if not slightly higher. <laughs> no. So I don't know, maybe that's so they could run them over. I don't know. Yeah. But, well, you know, curiosity would be, and maybe, Lindley, maybe you know this, because your downtown is a designated village district, designated village, right, from the um, state of Vermont, mm -hmm. I wonder if, if that would allow you guys power to lower your speed limit just in a specific area. I don't, I'm not familiar with... And I think the speed study was part of that. This yeah. is, you know, we're going back away, so I'm not 100% I'm not sure on this, but I think the intention of the speed study was to do that. One of the risks of the speed study was if they find that people are actually going 30 or 35, it can it actually increase yeah, force yeah. the state to increase the speed. Right. Right. Um, um, right. I don't think it was up high enough that they no. would increase it, but no. I also think there was not a big yeah. call or a big drive for decreasing it. Yeah. Could we push on that? I, Probably. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm, I was just curious if you knew if that was part of your uh, power. It was not yeah, part of the powers it to be a designated downtown. Right. I have experience with that. We could not lower our speed limit um, in the because they want to lower it in the right. downtown. We couldn't designate a village speed limit. I, think, I don't know if you I have separate that. special powers as a designated village versus so perhaps not. But I mean, I guess it's something that could. I can't remember if we did or or if we were waiting to get the information to then present that. Right. I wasn't it. sure because there also um, was no one that was gravel road, so I didn't know if you was your goal to we lower had, the speed limits on your we back had, roads because um, that's a slippery slope too. We had um, um, Joanne Woods um, at the same time. She had some speeding issues slash some lack of signage on uh -huh. her road, and we had another road or two that we could use, and we did a speed study on her gravel road as well. So then these don't need to be on your board, list of board items that we can take these off? No, but I mean, every year we're, we can do do some based on our membership, so. Yeah, you just have to be careful. When are they? I don't know when they're going out. I, they were supposed to go in the ball outs with the crosswalk. Oh, yes, they were. And I asked that question. I said, hey, when you were down there, so I painting, did you put the ball outs in? And he said, no. He said, I, they didn't have time. Well, I know the bulb out by the bank, you know, the bank was doing their thing, so that was the reason why they didn't want to yeah. do that. Is the, is the crosswalk painted by Spalding? I believe yeah. that yeah. they're all painted. He said they're all done. Yeah. Done they did the others. 
Yeah, well, they just they went back um, to last week. Yeah. Yeah, because when they initially started, they didn't do the one at the um, hardware store and the one by the so press. So I can ask um, Alan. Those got done I don't know, last week, last maybe. Week, yeah. yeah. But we probably ought to get them in. I know, you know, there's people uh, that like them, people that don't. We will make the decision on those things for next year. All right. So, so I'm going to go down there and measure them just to show everybody that the road did not change. So in the, the dimension term, of the road did not change at all. So in the short but, term, uh, I'm so I'm not going to worry about doing getting any speed studies yeah. on them. And it sounds like honestly, if people are speeding <laughs> on your back road, signage, sure, enforcement. That's really. Uh, I think right now. If people are complaining, then yeah. just let us know, and we can give Oscar some roads yeah. he needs Good to. Trees down. I don't think they're speeding too much right now. I can yeah. imagine they're not. Yeah. Probably, probably don't dare to. Yeah, no doubt. So, um, sorry, I just wasn't sure. Cherry Hill Cemetery is on this list. Well, the other thing about Cherry Hill Cemetery, I mean, we got the, the you know the drainage issue, but there was also I've been talking to Greg. We were looking at some point in time at trying to plug in some money for the wall repair. Um, uh, Route 100. Yeah. Right. I know that. Um, oh, 107. Betty Ann called today. Was that the one on? It's the same cemetery. Yes. Yes. She called today. Asked if I was aware of it. I said I was not. But I would speak to Cecil. Um, Greg didn't mention that to me, so there's well, no money budget for that bid, here. Um, Greg Barr had given a bid to Keith back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it never never got off the ground. Right. So I talked to Greg and I asked him if he had a copy of it to resubmit it or look at it again and get it to Greg so we just have some kind of idea. Of, you know, Is there any grant money what out did there? What happened? What, oh, sorry. What, so did, did he find it? No. Okay. No, so didn't, he could never find it. So I'm going to ask Cecil about it so he could get a bid. Get, some, get an estimate for it so we could put it in the next budget. Yeah, just see how we're we going to fix all the stones in the cemetery. Too? No, he's talking about the, is it a retaining? I know, wall? I know what he's talking about, but it, in order to fix things, yeah, there's people's well, stones that are yep. have fallen in the ground. Is it a ground. retaining wall? Yeah, it's right, it's right on. Yeah, it's a little. It's right on wall, wall seven there. there, right near Mike Haker's. Uh, I just wonder, you know, with all the different grants out there, I wonder if there's some sort of grant that we can yeah. take advantage of that might deal with some public are, cemeteries or historic. I don't know, that's a good question. We, we could look. I've never seen one myself, but I had really had the necessity. We did have a couple of older ones, cemeteries where the stones had broke, and um, the gentleman who did the mowing was actually um, kind of stood them back up and was using placing like rebar on either side to kind of put it up and it wasn't a permanent fix, but you could look and see. And it may be one of those things that, um, well, if there's not grant money out there, sometimes things like that are a good capital. You know, if you're going to try capital fundraising for a capital project, a lot of times people, you know, may find that. So, but I can... Um, but, but is, not, the, is the town now, responsible? Point, look for grant money. Is the town responsible for headstones that fall over? The town is responsible is that part of for maintenance of care? cemeteries. That's what I when I but bought my lot. I get perpetual care. But does that? Yeah, but you buy the stone. You're gonna, but, you know, yeah. that's assuming you. But I can't set it. The mm -hmm. town right. the person has to set it. Oh. Okay. You know what? We'll have to look, Paul. Yeah. Yeah, I, don't, yeah, I don't know. When I maintenance being you know, mowing, et cetera, yeah. um, maintaining it. So whether it's stone repair, I don't know, but mm -hmm. there's a book at the Secretary of State's office that um, that they had written a few years ago. So she's looked probably now if you're following Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just to know that there is a position in the homeowner's policy for gravestone. Look at that. No kidding. Mm -hmm. That's great information. Mm -hmm. Good. Right, oh, that's so it's in your homeowners? Yeah. You can't collect on it. They stop paying the insurance when they die. Yeah. You're like, huh? Insurance. What was that? Oh, that's great. Oh, that's true, yeah. Thank you. 
So at, when we were talking about the, you know, updating our outstanding issues list, mm -hmm. uh, one that we had started and we were starting to gain some traction on, that was a goal of Greg's this year, was to work on the capital buildings fund yep, I'm aware of piece, that. which was more on the public works building yep, end and of things. Yep, and that's on here. Um, yeah. So um, that was kind of one that I had thought of. That it's on this list in your packet, alternate locations for yeah. garage and cost and capital buildings. But yes, I'd like to see a, um, I'd like to see a capital plan done to have it for the um, transport. Yeah, that and the, obviously the, the water infrastructure piece. You know, those are kind of the big things that come to mind for me that yep. we just got to keep our <coughs> finger on that right. bolt. And I, you know, water infrastructure. You know what I wondered, Chris, is if you, I, I was thinking after I put your list together here, um, stormwater issue on Main Street buildings is damaging the sidewalks. I'm curious as to if yeah. that's in your, do you, they, I, I, you haven't read all of your zoning ordinance, but um, for future, if it's not already in your zoning ordinance, it'd be something that you would want to make sure that's in your future zoning is to make sure that any buildings manage their own stormwater runoff. Well, I know we had, we had talked about that, well, we talked about the ice buildup this winter no. on one specific building out there that, and it just so happens to be the exact same thing you can see on the sidewalk where it's, it's wearing, wearing the sidewalk. Or do some sort of zoning permit to upgrade something. We had talked about that in the winter because that was mm -hmm. pretty icy, dangerous section yeah. of sidewalk last year. Right. And the more salt you put on it, the worse it got. So yeah. it was, you know. Then it just starts falling. And so yeah, all right. Yeah, I noticed that as well. That's um, there is a few things I just wanted to bring up from, I've been doing a lot of walking around with the kids and stuff. And a few things I think that we, one has to be addressed like before winter. Okay. And the other one probably should be addressed by winter, but there's a piece of sidewalk out here by, um, by the lamp post. You know, it's right on the corner mm -hmm. of the first building here. Yeah, by in front of the town hall. Yeah, and there's probably got to be a, a six, six inch gap between one piece of sidewalk and the other one. So if you were handicapped, you would have, you know. It's spray painting. It won't yeah, and you can see there's something there's a void happening there because the light pole is starting to tip towards the river and the sidewalk has sunk down so you know, four right or six inches. So that's right out here in front of the town hall? Or yeah, right, right across. Okay. Yeah. across right on the oh, corner the of the building. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And, and then for whatever reason, we have a section of sidewalk that is, as you go up Church Street, um, it's like um, two houses up from the ch church, the, on the left that has tented and it's raised up by probably a foot now mm -hmm. over the curb. Um, I don't know if, if there was water that got in there last year in the winter time, but it... That takes a drill, a drill by one night. Yeah. Like you know what I'm talking about. There's like three pieces of sidewalk that's all tented like this. It's, yeah. It, it's pretty well damaged and it's in the same area of it being... Um, well, it... It is a hazard, but at the same time, it's going to create challenges for this winter. So, okay. I can, no. um, and that might be something that we may have to just get a price from yeah. somebody to fix. There's, it's three five foot sections of the sidewalk that have to be replaced, and then this. So they're they're all five foot. I think they're in five foot sections. I think okay. that's what they usually have now. They, but they need, be, they need to know that they need to fix the problem. Don't just dig the dirt out and throw in some more concrete. Well, There's something wrong. Well, the other thing I was looking at, because we just, these side works were done six years ago, maybe? Yeah. Six. Much longer ago. And there, the wear and tear on these sidewalks that's happening right now, I mean, we'll be lucky to get 10 or 12 years out of these sidewalks that you should probably be able to get 20 or 25 years out of. Now, I, I do see some areas that are probably the workmanship of whoever did it, um, but the other thing I question is how we're plowing those sidewalks in the wintertime because there's a lot of areas that are starting to spall that are clearly from some sort of down pressure on plowing or something. Well, don't you use um, salt on your sidewalks? Mm -hmm. Do you use salt? We do, but they're, 
every one of these is happening right at the, the joint of the sidewalk. You know, each joint of the sidewalk, there's probably a two to four inch piece where you can see where scrape marks, where you oh, can so see. The it. Yeah, I mean, hard. So, oh, I don't know if that's maybe we need to make sure, one, okay. that the plow is up and maybe we just let the salt take care of a little bit more on the sidewalks. But, um, but there's a lot of wear and tear on that sidewalk all the way up through there. And that sidewalk was, you know, should it's be brand new here. still. It happened when they put the bridge in because they put a new street light in, they dug mm -hmm. back here, and dug under, almost under the sidewalk and under that footing for there to put a new light over there. I've complained about that light being crooked yeah. since. Yeah, well, it's moving. I mean, there's- But they dug it out. The sidewalk has dropped. Right and I don't the remember the back. sidewalk being like that last year. So that something's going on there. Well, and keep in mind too that, um, I, I can't remember what you did this year, but I know last year I didn't get a thousand bucks in your budget know. for sidewalk. So well, it's something might be in, something to it's just something to keep in mind that right. you know next year if we think we're gonna do some placement that we yeah. budget for it. I mean I so they do a sidewalk here for five nine years ago. Right. And like you got the people up on South Main Street that park on all five and drive them crazy. Mm. Maybe we should get some sort of reminder out there. Well, don't you? Do you have it? Is it in your parking ordinance that you can't be on the sidewalk? I don't know. We'd have to look. I'll have Kelly know. look because, so. yeah, we can be. That's, but, yeah, great. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That one, clearly, that one on. The one on Church Street, we're going to have to do something with it because it's, I mean, it's it's pretty awful. All right. We'll find out what you're on. I was thinking the same thing that maybe the homeowner right adjacent to that had some thing to do with it but um, can't right. prove that now but and then this one out here I don't think has it's been well, there forever. it should get done I don't think it has to but if okay. you were in a wheelchair no, well, you'd be fine. very challenging to go from the one plows, to the other so do that. Um, and we'll then if, I don't know how they plow it in the winter time if it's been like that because there's literally a trough you know, and the poles starting to move more towards the river you know right. so. so we'll see what um, your parking board. I'm assuming you have a parking board that's on the left, so I'll look and see, and then um, talk to Oscar about it. If not, you'll have to. If not, you add parking ordinance to your list of things to do. Yeah. Um, I had a question. question. Okay. Probably should come up during public comment, but pocket park between the laundromat and Richardson's building. There's clearly a tree that's fallen, probably during the winter or something, and it. It's, somebody's done a really nice job cleaning up the front of that park, but it's hard to clean past the picnic table because that tree is there. Hmm. And okay. I don't know if we can go in and just like chainsaw it up, or like at least the part that's in the park. Um, I, can, I can ask Morgan. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That would make it easier to read and sort of make it look nicer. It looks a little, even with the front cleaned up, it still looks a little ramshackle. Yeah. Um, I just had a question for the board. Are you guys, Ryan Rice, he's sent you letters, he sent you bills, he's all of them included in your package, and now you've got another letter, which I yeah. had to see who's now. Are you guys somebody's Yeah, you're ignoring it. Somebody has I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, it, I, I saw this letter, and then I think I remember seeing some sort of There was a bill in a prior Correspondence at other than time. I mean, I don't think. Do you remember that, Mom? We're talking about. I haven't heard a word you guys said. Oh, sorry. Sorry. It's um the Brian Wright. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that I had Kelly put a copy of that bill that we had received in a prior packet. I don't remember seeing that. I don't think so. You guys don't remember seeing no. it. Okay. No, this was the first letter the first that I, I read, read on it. it. Yeah. Okay. We're going to start getting more of these people taking care of their roads because the roads aren't getting taken care of. Yeah. We're going to get a lot of these. It was a hundred and some odd dollars. Oh. So it was a hundred some odd dollars, and now obviously you can see I had not read, read this dissertation, but um, I'm just seeing it now. So, um, so I'm not sure. He obviously had some interaction with Greg, um, and yeah. he is wondering if he's going to get paid for the work. Um, I think that maybe now the road crew felt that they had done the work. So I'm not sure yeah. what we want I to drove do. by while he was doing it, so I will vouch for the fact that Brian did the work. Okay. Because I was working up there and I came down by and he's there and then mm -hmm. What's he happening said, is what the hell? they're greedy and he just drops his blade down and rolls the stuff right up on the people's lawns, whatever, he don't care. Uh -huh. So you get you end up with a burn. 
maybe you can talk to. Went from Winter Pile and they went, they came down off Michelle Packard's Road. They, he says, go down to my rental house, turn around and come back, but they wouldn't. They just swung wide and went right down over the road, right onto his plan and plowed down. So, I mean, it's a it's hundred and some odd dollars. I mean, my experience generally is if you're gonna tear up someone's lawn, we would go back in the spring and, go and, fix that. and deal with it if we had, if it was a big deal. I mean, this wasn't a big issue um, for me. But in this case, if he took his time and I'm just, I'll I mean, I've, I, I mean, I, I, can do I, on my road. I lived in three towns, of course, this town here, it, you know, the state messes up my land, so it's yeah. not the town, but. <laughs> And he comes down and but the mailbox is still there, so we're good. So I mean, it, um, I think. I but think we have to be very careful because mm -hmm. if we, I mean, shame on us if we do damage someone's property. We should go out there on good faith and fix it. And it might not be completely perfect, but we got to make the effort. Absolutely. But I think we have to be very careful. Again, setting a precedence of paying people because if we pay one, we're going to have to pay a lot of other people. That's so, I, I mean, I think. You know, in this case here, I mean, I, it's, this was the first that I have heard of this okay. incident. Well, obviously, now, Greg maybe did. others had, but Greg must not. Have said I mean, even though it's a hundred bucks, yeah. hundred dollars turns into two thousand dollars. It turns into ten thousand dollars. You know. I think what Brian's looking for is just somebody to pay attention to right. his situation and, and come out and talk yeah. to him about it. That he doesn't yeah. feel that he got satisfaction from Greg or uh, Alan. His brother doesn't either. But we gotta. And he has to have a milk truck come to his house. Yeah, he has to have a milk truck come there every day. Mm. You got a burn, you got a ditch deep in this table. Yeah. And that wasn't even put on the FEMA project. And mm -hmm. uh, Rick said that uh, Alan and Greg said he's gonna take care of that right after the first, you know, middle of April. And he's never seen him again. Nobody. And he's still got a milk truck coming in there every day. Every day. Why don't we? Um why don't we table that and okay, at okay, our next discussion, we'll set up a I'll reach out to him. executive session. We can talk about some about of the this. maintenance of the roads. Okay, and I will reach out to, um, I'll reach out to him and just let him know that. I think in this case, if it. Alan went out and just, you know, went and spent a few minutes with the gentleman, you know, yeah. it might go a long ways. And uh, But there's, there's a lot of things happening out in the roads right now. There are some areas that are being neglected, and then there are some areas that the, I've been on two of the roads recently that landowners are taking it upon themselves to mark new boundaries. So right. putting like large stones in the road, so that aren't supposed to be there. So, so and that's probably the result of us not, you know, doing what we should be doing on the roads. Well, I but, around and uh, got the uh, GPS, it was one up on the by truck or somebody took the flag. That was the one Yeah, I got, there's one landowner in Lilliesville that has placed a bunch of rocks, yeah. what they thought is on the side of the road, but it happens to be a couple feet into the road that, you know, grading or if it was winter, plowing or whatever, we we'll interrupt that, so. But we'll add that to the next meeting. Okay. We can talk about that. And sure. Teresa and, and I have um, had some discussions with yeah, that. Yeah, I'll so. reach out to, um, Brian, apology, speak to him, and then possibly send the road form out. Or, I know he stated in his letter he didn't want to spend the time coming out here, but, right. you know, if it really came down to it, you know, he would, I would think he need to come here and voice his opinion. And All right, well, I'll speak to him and see, um, you know, sometimes people just want to be heard and acknowledged, and yeah. so I'll certainly um, reach out to him.